Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast, Uh, a very special episode that I might add. Um, As you most know, a couple weeks ago, I had my wife on. Uh, Technically, that's the first guest in the new house uh, slash studio, but uh, officially, this is the this is the week. You know, this was this is the storm from uh, uh, the calm, the calm before the storm, you know, this is the storm, you know, we're, we're back working. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm very much excited about it. You know, like, I've been working on a studio for, you know, I mean, I don't know, I say it's a studio. And I'm going to keep calling it that because that's what I think it is. And that's what it is. But, you know, I got a nice table down here. We got a nice area. You know, back in the day, uh, way back when, whenever I was in the apartment, you know, we were just interviewing in my living room, which was, it was nice. You know, don't get me wrong. It was very nice. But uh, I feel a little bit more official that I have my own, my own space. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's big, you know, it's big for me. Um, This is a, you know, this is just a, this is my own area. I used to have to kick Antoinette out, and I used to feel bad that I'd be, you know, shooing her away uh, like a pesky crow or something. But uh, this is, you know, this is progression. You know, we're here, and uh, you know, I just have to, you know, before we get into it all, I gotta, I, I wanted to take a couple seconds and bring some things to your attention. You know, so again, as you may know. I'm sponsored by Turner's Premium Iced Tea. You know, Turner Dairy Farms, the creators of arguably one of the most iconic drinks in the city of Pittsburgh. You know, I don't know if there's another beverage that is as big as, you know... Turner's tea, you know, they're local. What other, what other one is local, you know, throw beer out, throw an icy light out, you know, people like icy, people like iron city. Uh, you know, I feel like that that's like a Pittsburgh beer. You know, you look at iron city and you think about that, but you know, besides that, what other drink is more Pittsburgh than a Turner's tea? There ain't it. There, there ain't nothing there. Uh, but there is a uh, very special event, you know, happening coming up January 25th of 2021. Uh, the iconic Turner's Tea is teaming up with the Oakmont Bakery. Oakmont Bakery, uh, a huge establishment, family business in uh, Oakmont. Uh, over towards the plum area. If you're not familiar with that, um, I wasn't before I started dating my wife, but, uh, it's, it's an incredible place. You walk in there and you got any suite you could ever want. And, uh, it's quality and Turner's and Oakmont bakery have teamed up to turn their signature baked good, the Oakmonter into a delicious limited edition flavored milk. You got the Oakmonter limited edition flavored milk drop in January 25th. Put it on the calendars, set an alarm on your phone, and uh, find wherever you could buy it um, and, you know, make plans to get it because it's going to go quick. And I'll leave it at that. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about this week before we start, uh, I have... (sighs) We've been working nonstop, but besides for work, uh, you know, we, we like to watch shows. You know, I've been watching The Bachelor with Antoinette. Bitches are crazy on there, you know, and I, I don't say, I, you know, I don't call women bitches, but like Queen Victoria on The Bachelor is a straight up bitch. You know, she's a couple other bad words, but uh, I'll leave it at bitch. Uh, but it, I just cannot even, I can't even process what I'm watching whenever I'm watching it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like watching shit with Antoinette. You know, she appeases me. You know, I've been putting her through. Uh, uh, so I started Snowfall. Snowfall is a show on FX about uh, the crack epidemic in uh, California, in, in uh, South Central. And it is, it's, I mean, it's one of the best shows I've ever watched in my entire life. Uh I, you know, I think one of the best series in a whole is Breaking Bad. Um, that's comparable to this. I, I feel like shows comparable to Breaking Bad uh, before Snowfall was like Ozark, you know, uh, something like that. But this is, you know, this might even be a little bit better than Breaking Bad for me, at least. But it's an incredible show. It's on Hulu, the first three seasons. Uh, the fourth season is going to be coming out. And uh, I urge you, if you are someone that likes television and you're looking for something to watch, Snowfall fall is just unreal but uh yeah and uh i mean i 
I am just excited for all the new shit that's happening right now. You know, we're in this new studio. I have a, uh, a wonderful guest this week. His name is John Quest. And uh, John Quest is a well-respected lyricist. He's a well-respected uh, person in the in the com- community of Pittsburgh. You know, I've known him. him I've, I've known of him for, you know, probably, you know, damn near a decade. Uh, I came across him because he was part of uh, a well-known and, you know, well-respected duo in the city called the Varsity Squad with uh, Beatty. Beatty was also a guest on the podcast a little bit back, Um, but they were, you know, when you mentioned Pittsburgh hip hop, like they were, they were there, they were at all the local shows, you know, you saw them, uh, they were buzzing, you know what I mean? They're buzzing. And, uh, I started to have them on my radar back in the day. I say back in the day, but like 10 years ago, like shadow lounge 58, stuff like that. That's how I came across him. So I knew of him as a rapper, you know, that's all I knew of John. And, uh, as of recently, I've been following him on social media and I have seen that his life has kind of shifted in a, in a very, very interesting way. Uh, John practices Reiki. Uh, John is now practicing yoga. And I mean, this guy is, I mean, he's a jack of all trades. Um, he is just very much into uh, physical, mental, spiritual healing. And uh, I am someone who is, you know, I'm getting older. I've talked about it on here. And I think about shit way differently now. And I'm very interested to talk to people who like kind of have this, you know, as John calls it, a spiritual awakening. And uh, I thought it was like super interesting. Uh, we had a wild ass conversation because, like, you know, like I said, I knew him from rapping. So like, I really didn't know anything about his life. And, uh, I was interested to get him in here and try to learn about where, you know, cause if you listen to John's music, like, you know, you got, you got raw shit in there, you know what I mean? And now like from the flip side, I've been seeing on social media, he's like, you know, this guy that's on a quest, uh, you know, no pun intended with the name, uh, a quest for, you know, something, different in life and it's and it's it's inspiring and it's interesting and i wanted to get him in here so i got him in here first guest in the new house uh pumped about it and we just had an insane incredible conversation about you know everything from like rap and how he got into that to how he got into reiki and like uh i'm not even going to try to explain what reiki is you know google it if you want but uh john talks about it on here he talks about all this stuff on here i'm going to quit talking your ear off but before i do I would like to implore you to please, 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 uh, if you have not yet, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. I'm working on the studio to get video in here, so hop on YouTube, search I'll Call You Right Back podcast, it'll pop right up, throw subscribe on there, find me on Facebook, you know, shit is about to pop off. And uh, while you're doing that, hop on over and follow John Quest on Instagram to, you know, kind of keep up with what he's doing. His personal account, John Quest 41 to J O N Q U E S T four one two. And then he has like his spiritual account where he's doing yoga stuff. He's doing Reiki stuff. And, uh, he is, you know, I'm excited to see him like break into it. I've had yoga Ralph on here a couple times and like, he's got me into yoga. I got my wife into yoga and now she's more into it than I am. And, uh, his other account is quest the yogi Q U E S T T-H-E-Y-O-G-I. And uh, John now teaches a class. Uh, he teaches two a week. Um, Vinyasa Flow with Quest at Trap Yoga Studios. It's 6101 Penn Avenue. Uh, it's in Pittsburgh. And you go there. He has a weekly schedule Monday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And again, you could go to Quest the Yogi on Instagram for all of his information and, uh, you know, see what he is doing. And, uh, I, I just, I I really enjoyed my conversation. Like I said, I didn't know him before this. And, uh, it's always cool to be able to bring someone in here and just really be able to just have a great conversation and like get deep into it. You know, someone you don't know, you just have this incredible heady conversation and I loved every second of it. So without further ado, episode 148 of I'll call you right back podcast in the new studio with John quest. Hello? Telephone. 
Just a casual conversation mm-hmm. because it's like, you know, you get into a conversation and then uh, it's just easy to, uh, you know, I'm tangential, you know, I go all off, but, uh, you know, people usually, people usually do, you know, shorter podcasts. Yeah. I do like a long form. I know, one. I know. <laughs> a couple hours. Like. Yeah. So it's like hour and a half around there, something like that. You know, I usually try to start buttoning up around like an hour, hour 15, but it's like people don't even know. That we're talking that long. Yeah, the conversations are good. Man. That's I try to be. I try to be because I'm just like inquisitive. You know, I tell people. You know, I uh, I invite people on who, you know, I got to be. I got to be like interested in what they're doing because right. it's like the conversation won't flow. You know, it won't flow if it's if it's someone that like I'm not that interested in because it's like the way I work is that like I just like. Uh, I think of the guests that I'm having on mm-hmm. and uh, I kind of just get in my head about like what I want to know about yeah. them. And I think with you is going to be super interesting because it's like, I've known of you for probably like a decade, you know, like a grip I've known. Right. And ever since like, uh, you know, the varsity squad shit, I, I, like I try to think like how people, uh, like how I come across people and it had to be the varsity squad shit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anywhere. Cause uh, it was like, um, I, I went out solo for yeah. a little bit I started solo yeah and then like shortly after I dropped two tapes the varsity squad was like already formed and that's when it really like a lot of people started to so you were a solo attention. artist beforehand yeah yeah I was a solo artist yep now uh I don't know too much about you so forgive me for asking no, like cool. dumb questions like where'd you where are you even from no I'm from Pittsburgh are you yeah, yeah I'm from Pittsburgh I actually grew up on the hill district okay uh, it's about 13 12 and then I bounced around in the city yeah a lot there's different neighborhoods Point Breeze Wilkinsburg um, how old are you I'm 34. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea anything like, uh, <laughs> even whenever like I had like, uh, like BDN and shit, I was like, bro, I don't know anything about you. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I think that that's what's dope about it because it's like, I've listened to your music, but like, you don't really have like an opportunity to, you know, just stop. Like if I seen you at Shadow Lounge, like me and you just can't right. sit there and talk for right, an hour right, and a half. Right, like you're right. doing your shit, you know, I'm doing my stuff. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting, but uh, I was curious to talk to you. You know, uh, I saw that, uh, obviously know that like, you know, I know the whole, I know all the rap shit, mm-hmm. you know, and recently, you know, I started following you on social media and I start to see that you're getting into some wild shit <laughs> and, uh, I love that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's real fascinating and, uh, you know, That's you know, funny. Ralph, you yeah, know, yeah, uh, Ralph is cool, man. Ralph he's is, homie. he's the one who, uh, kind of like started to open my mind into these like different avenues of you know of life or somewhere like life that. Yeah. you know health and wellness spiritual healing you know he's the one who got me into yoga and shit and i see that like you know i saw you at first you know getting into yoga and i was like you know is he just gonna do a class and then i saw you're like you I'm know all the way in you're all the way in and i <laughs> yeah, love that yeah, i'm I, all the way in i love it <laughs> now uh so before we get into all that crazy shit i start an opening segment with everyone it's called what's in the cup So what's in your cup? Got Turner's lemonade, baby. Turner's ice lemonade, ice cold, chilled, and I got the diet Turner's. Um, but uh, you know we're sponsored by Turner's over here, so hey, I take shout a second. Out to Turner's. Shout out to Turner's. Like you know, was it was it big for you growing up? Yeah, you know what, man. Um, especially when I went to Pin Hills, though. I'll be honest. Like when I got to Pin Hills, yeah, it was like Turner's everything. Cause That's because they're from, from Pin Hills. Hills. Yeah, right. They're from Pin Hills. Yeah. <laughs> so when I went to Pin Hills, like ninth grade, um, it was Turner's all over the place. They seen the the, uh, the Turner Building, like oh, yeah. all over it is crazy. Wow, so that's when sure. I got into it. Now, uh, so I mean, like what, what, like what's your avenue of even getting into the music? Like when did that happen? Like how old were you? Um, so it started really, um, like my mom was always big into music. Yeah. So you know, as far as me recording and like actually trying to put something together on my own, really yeah. started in high school. Um, like when I got around uh, Penn Hills in yeah. ninth grade, that's when I like really started to, uh, you know, just write some lyrics with a bunch of my buddies in the same school district that I was in. Mm-hmm. And we had a group. <laughs> there was like seven of us. We had a group called DDC, and it was Dark Disciple Click. That yeah. was our name. And um, 
we got that name because we were just huge fans of Three Six Mafia. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, that's naturally. Yeah. You're all right with that. Um, I love Three Six. Three Six is in my top ten. Of Actually, all time, yeah, all all time. Three Six Mafia is in my top ten. I mean, they got a they got a catalog yeah. to back it up <laughs> for sure. They do. Um, so that's how it started, really. And then you know, I kind of just went through um, a couple different names, but I didn't take it serious. Yeah. Until uh, man, until about 2010. Yeah. Yes, when I took it serious and was we'll started put together my first mixtape, which was uh, relevant to Johnny Quest season yeah. one. Yeah. And now, now, so before, now before the music and shit, like, what are you into before this? Like, are you uh, like computers. sports? Computers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah. So <laughs> funny, right? Because nobody really knows too much about me and I kind of like it that way. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was into computers like growing up really. Like, like I was looking into your social media, like, you know, I'll usually do my, I'll do my due diligence and I'll like get, get into people's social media and go all the way back. Mm-hmm. Just to see if I could find some like noir war type shit and just like bring up like random <laughs> shit. Stuff, yeah. But it's like, uh, you know, I didn't know too much about it. And like, I saw that you're into like, you know, I saw you doing, take, taking photos for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you seem, you seem to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is, man. Especially even on like computers. That's, um, that's actually my career. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm a DevOps engineer. Really? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that, um, c- computers since I like was in, Middle school, high That's school, wild. just breaking and fixing stuff. Uh, but yeah, I've been in tech for a long time, dude. Wow. Yeah. Are you uh, Are you Apple? I see you're Apple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Apple now. I started with Windows, but I'm Apple now. Too yeah. Apple. yeah. Uh, what do you think the, like, what do you think the, the you know, you usually don't have people that are Android fans uh, that convert <laughs> over into Apple fans. Like, if you're a tech person, you're usually an Android f- user. Um. You know what? I think it goes both ways. Me yeah. personally, I just don't like the green bubble. I hear, I feel that. <laughs> That's I'm just being real. Like I don't like texting people with green bubbles. I'm like, uh, I'll answer back, but it's just like you got a green bubble. <laughs> yeah. I uh I have a uh, sister-in-law who's like she's in tech, she does like cybersecurity yeah. and she's like a droid lunatic, you know, talking shit on Apple all the time. Yeah, I mean, they do talk shit on Apple. It's crazy. It's like, you know, it's like arguing religion. It's but like, I was talking shit on them. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> Uh, computers though. So it's like, did that come up with like school? Like, no, so my mom was into computers. She introduced it to me. Wow. Yeah, shout out to her. Yeah. She's, uh, she's gone. So rest in peace to my mom. I saw that. That uh, happened recently. I'm sorry to hear about yeah, that. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. But yeah, she got me into computers and, uh, you know, again, like one of my best friends, he was also into computers. So we would just like break and fix, learn how to hack some stuff. And this oh, was like dope. when AIM was around, yeah. just like <laughs> doing goofy stuff. Doing you know? like, uh, were you like uh, hip on like the MySpace coding and shit like that? Uh, so no, with the, like the MySpace, I did a little bit of, I just had a page on MySpace. Yeah. But um, no, I wasn't even coding. We were like uh, using, Dan, you remember uh, MIRC? You remember? No. Okay, it was kind of, it was like, you can kind of consider it like the dark net before the dark net kind of like came out real popular. But it was just, um, it was a program. You can go in there and just download like albums and it would just be all ah. these servers that people would just have and upload all the types of stuff on there. So you can get movies, books, all kinds but, of yeah, shit. all types of stuff. You just go there and download from their servers. See, I never really had to like dive into that because my brother, uh, my brother's six years older than me. He's thirty seven now, but like he was the one that was like kind of into all that shit. Like whenever he went to college and shit, he used to just like get on people's servers and download like entire catalogs. Yeah, it was of like movies, that. <laughs> music, and like that's how kind of we got into like you know a little bit more shit. Yeah, right. But, uh, Same here. <laughs> it's uh, you know, if you don't have to like, you know, if you don't have to seek that out yourself, you know, you don't have to really learn about it. That's I had my brother just yeah, like feed me all right. this shit. Yeah. And like he was like a coffee filter being a little bit older. So like he was putting me on all kinds of good music. Mm-hmm. Like he uh experienced all the all the whack shit and like already threw that to the side and got me on all the good stuff. But uh so I mean that's that's crazy. So it, it, in ninth grade you're getting into music and it's like, what makes you want to start getting into that? Like, um, you know what, <sighs> to be honest with you, um, I just like just to hit, to hear the lyrics really just yeah. like different types of music. And then, you know, I started with like really big into down South type of music. Yeah. The West coast growing up and, um, you know, the East coast came later, but, uh, yeah, man, you know, I just thought honestly, like I was hearing people, rhyme in high school yeah and they were dope 
Yeah. And then you had some people that were whack. Yeah. But I'm like, I can do this too. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that better than that one. You know what I'm So that's how it really started. Then my one friend, Greg, um, his name was G Killer at the time. We still call him that. But um, he would just make beats. So he was like the in house producer. Yeah. And his beats were down south because, again, we're listening to Three Six Mafia. So you're taking all day inspiration long. from yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's really how it started, man. So there was a six of us. I mean, the funny part is, too, we would record in his house. Yeah. Like with the busted setup on windows and just like a little mic and using the screen door for the filter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know how to write lyrics at the time. So I guess I should say we did not account bars at the time. So we would just write, yeah. write, and write, and then just go record with no structure in the song. So it would just be like long verses. A long verse and a hook, and then somebody else just comes with a long verse. And um, I didn't start learning how to count bars until after high school when I met uh, a couple people in the city and like just studying them and seeing what they were doing. And actually, that first group that I found was East End Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I found them on, like, MySpace. You know what really? I mean? Like, BD, Mac, my yeah. like, franchise. I found them on MySpace. And I'm just like, whoa, these dudes are, like, really spitting. And they had some. Uh, DJs hosting their mixtapes that I was listening to. Like, uh, I don't know if it's Big Mike, but they had a couple DJs that were like in the scene at the time. And um, yeah, just they inspired me, really. I was like, okay, these dudes are out here. Let me get out here too. It's interesting to hear because like I was going through and I was listening to uh, like, I was listening to a bunch of your music, just like trying to like hear your lyrics and shit like that. And you're very, uh, you're a very vivid storyteller with like your music. Like uh, Appreciate that. like therapy, like I was I listened to that probably like four different times just oh, because it, it it's such like a cool like uh, when it first time I heard uh, Dance with the Devil by uh, Immortal Tech Immortal Technique. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it, so. it's I think like so. I I never like heard a, a, a song that like told a story like that, and uh, I was just like you know kind of fascinated whenever you would hear shit because it's like. Yeah, everyone's telling a story somewhat with their music, but it's like you're telling like a full story from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, I and try to. I think that that's a. I think it's interesting to be able to do that and incorporate that into you know a complete project and still have it like kind of flow well. I appreciate it, man. For sure, I was yeah. listening to it because like I, I'm I'm very very transparent. I never listened to like a bunch of your shit. Like your first project, I got to be honest, never listened to. Mm-hmm. It. But uh, I started like diving into all the other stuff, and I immediately noticed that like you know you. you uh, I like your references, like, you know, buying Supreme decks and don't even skateboard and shit like that. Like, I think that that's <laughs> well, dope. I appreciate it, bro. Because it's like, you know, you're, you seem to be very uh, real with your lyrics. That's how I go by Johnny Quest for the ventures. Yeah. And I think that that's dope too. That's why I was in, uh, that, that was uh, coming up next. But like, where do you, uh, like, like, how did that name come to be? Um, yeah. So Johnny Quest was my favorite cartoon yeah. growing up. I just remember like waking up, watching the show. It was him, uh, the dot. Race Bannon, Haji, Bandit, and they would just be like all over the the planet, the universe, just saving the world. <laughs> one day you might be fighting zombies, then the next one you fight aliens and shit. What like, a weird show that was. Yeah, it was crazy as hell because you're I, traveling everywhere with kids. Like. <laughs> I bet you if I watched that now, I would be like, you know, I started watching some shit like, uh, I remember Snow White was on TV one day mm-hmm. and I like just went cross past it and I was like, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen this in like probably 15 years. Yeah. And I put it on and I was like, this shit is fucked up. Like it, it's like very dark and like bizarre. Yeah, it is. It's uh, but it's interesting to think about that. Johnny you know what Quest. other show is crazy too? I still watch it now. Rugrats. Rugrats yeah. is sick. This is a wild ass show. Like, sick. That episode with that big baby in there like that. I don't know if I remember that one. I mean, like I was a little bit. You know, I'm 30, so that like that was right in my wheelhouse. Like mm-hmm. Rugrats was every day. Rugrats, all them other cartoons, yeah, yeah. Doug, and everything like that. Now, uh, so in high school, you know, you start to take music a little bit more seriously and like you start to like progress. Now, what like, you know, was there like a, a sat, was there a saturation like there is now? Because everything in the world is saturated now. Podcasts, rappers, um, clothing brands. Maybe there was, but I just didn't pay attention to it. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, because I didn't know too much other than just like rhyming in the studio and burn it in on the CD. Yeah. Like we didn't have any covers. We were writing on CDs and just like passing them out. Yeah. Um, but when I started to like enter the local scene in Pittsburgh, 
um, to me, it didn't seem like it was uh, like an oversaturation of like people doing music because maybe because I, uh, I focused on a specific group. Yeah. You know, it was like the East End Empire. Um, there were some people in the Hill uh, like that I paid attention to, like GOV, uh, not GOV, um, Scorching Hot. But I think by that time, they were like kind of falling apart. Yeah. Um, like GOV, I was paying attention to them. So it was like select groups that were like doing stuff at the time yeah. when I uh, put my foot in the door. So it was like, it was a, to me, it was like a golden era of Pittsburgh hip hop. And and like, like what year you're talking about? Like 2009, 2010 yeah, I would say around like, there? I would say, because I came in like 2010. So yeah. GOV was probably, they were doing stuff a few years before then. Yeah. So yeah, I would say around that, that late 2000s, like the 2008, 2007 and it, so on. It, it's interesting because it's like, I grew up in McKeesport. You know, I grew up right around there. So like I, you know, the people that I was around was the 58s. B. White, Mayo, all that. Yeah, them. even them. Right? So Those it's like, homies. you know, like I, uh, I was never someone who was like, into the under super underground shit and it's like i'm very transparent about it like i talked to i interviewed billy hoyle on here and like he's like a you know he's like a, a, a oracle with all this like underground yeah, he's shit. super smart dude. super interesting <laughs> and like smart and it's like it's almost like i feel like i like i don't like i don't deserve to interview some people because it's like you know i don't know a lot about it and i feel like disrespectful almost you uh, know what i mean yeah, I mean, I can see that, but it also on the flip side, I think it could be interesting. It, that's right? that's why I do it because like people, I feel like people could tell that you know I come from a genuine a genuine place to want to like you know of curiosity. Like right. I'm just being genuine about everything, but uh, it's also like you know it's like it's fucked up because it's like you know I, I want to uh, you know you want to you, you don't want to like speak out of school. You want it to mm-hmm. like you, you want to seem like you know what the hell you're talking about. But, uh, you know, 58s, all them. So it would be like random people that uh, I would see them doing music with. And I think that that's how I like came across. Uh, I think I was going to a 58 show at the Shadow Lounge. And I think that that's how I like came across uh, the whole Varsity Squad and like all the other people that right, were around right, there. Right, right. And then, you know, I always just remember your name. And like I saw, uh, what was it, 2000 and when, when, was, when did you drop Hollywood? Oh, so Hollywood Divorce dropped in 2017? 19. No, 2019. 2019? Yeah. I couldn't remember the dates of it all. Yeah, 2019. But I remember you promoting that on social media, and I remember like listening to that because uh, honestly, the logo I thought was so dope. Like the white, just the Hollywood Divorce. Like I thought that that was so dope. Shout out to my man, David. He made that. It was definitely yeah, yeah, dope. Yeah, he made that. That whole uh like that whole tape, like you're getting into like your feelings like heavy. Like Yeah, man, look, I'm gonna be real with you, dude. That took me six years to make. Yeah. Um because before that, my last tape was twenty thirteen. Yeah. Which was uh no reruns with the producer named Meticulous from uh Brooklyn. Okay. And um yeah, I just took some time off. Just going through life. Yeah. And then like also by that time, like BD and I were doing so much to try to blow up. <laughs> And we just kept hitting roadblocks, like roadblocks after roadblocks. And like, it just came to a point where I think we both just got frustrated and was just like, yo, fuck this. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're at something <laughs> yeah, I mean? for so long and like, you know, right. something doesn't break and then you're just like, it's almost discouraged, you know, it gets discouraging yeah. for sure. Yeah, you know I mean, and then I was having kids, I got married. Like, How many kids you got? Two. Two kids. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Julian and Alan. How old? Uh, so Julian is 12 and Alan, she'll be eight in February. So, I mean, I don't, like, you got to have no time in the world, right? <laughs> I make time, you know, I make I make time. It's definitely wild. Like, every day I'm like, damn, I'm taking care of two little humans. Like, yeah, I know. It's crazy to <laughs> it's think crazy. about that. It's like, I'm, like I said, I'm 30. We just got this crib and it's like, I couldn't even imagine mm-hmm. to like have to be responsible for another human being. I don't even want to get a dog yet because it's like, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's stressful for me to even think yeah, about. I have it. a dog too, actually. That dog you got is cute. That little dog. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. That's that, my mom's dog. Yeah, that dog's like, cute. Brady. That's uh, my man. Now, now, while you're like, uh, you know, kind of, you know, coming into what you're doing with music and everything like mm-hmm. that, like what, uh, like what else are you doing besides that? Because like I know that you guys, like, you know, you guys were big throughout the city for you know a good bit of time. Yeah, for sure. Like, for what sure. else are you doing besides for music? Um, during that time? Yeah. Dude, I was working. 
Yeah. I'm still, I was still working in tech, like going to college. Yeah. <laughs> I was working uh, like probably, I probably was doing Best Buy Geek Squad. Mm. Like sh- this is shit people won't know yeah. unless they just popped up and see me. I'm like, oh shit. For sure. <laughs> you know? Um, but that's what I was doing. BD was doing his thing, you know? And um, yeah, man, it was just that music and I was just taking care of the family. And just between like doing so much, it kind of made it hard to do some shit with the music. You know, uh, just like we, we were doing a lot of out of town shows. Yeah. So we were driving everywhere. You, you guys were going up Erie a bunch, right? Yeah, we was going up to Erie, uh, Detroit. We went to Atlanta a couple yeah. times. Um, like a lot of that, spending a lot of nights in the studio because, uh, you know, BD's work ethic really, he like inspired that. His work ethic when it comes to the music is like crazy. And I was kind of like the lazy rapper, like, oh, I'll go in here and spit. Yeah. But so when we formed Varsity Squad, man, just like working with him, he really taught me a lot just being around and watching how he is with creating his projects. Yeah. And um, just together since, you know, we wanted to like really blow, we were just working so hard. And it was kind of, it's hard to balance too. You kind of get burnt out. For sure. That, I mean, know. it's hard for me to, you know, do this shit with the podcast. Like yeah. I do all this shit myself. So it's like, you know, for me to have a regular life and have a relationship with my wife and like, you know, my family and still be able to produce an episode every week, you know, it's stressful. I can't even imagine like, you know, all the other shit that you're doing. I'm curious though, because it's like, you know, for, I mean, I guess this is just assumptions. What's that? I feel like uh, rappers, you know, rappers or anyone that's doing anything creative, you know, like I'm stubborn with this. I do all this shit myself because I don't trust other people to do it. I keep this very close to my heart mm-hmm. and like I I just don't want to let other people in. How did that come to play with like you linking up with BD? Um, <laughs> you know what's crazy? Ah, oh, man. So my first show was at Shadow Lounge. It was like on a Tuesday night. And this is when I met BD and Mac. Yeah. Um, we, I had to sell tickets. It was like Afton. A bringer show. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people in the city know who I'm talking about because they always made you sell tickets. It'd be like, sell 10 tickets for 300 bucks to yeah. perform. And I um, only had three songs recorded. And I went, met BD and Mac. And there was like nobody at the show, really. Yeah, really? But there was like two people at the show because it was like a Tuesday night. Yeah, I guess. At like 6 that makes p.m. Sense. <laughs> Something real crazy. And um, that's when I met them and just like networking. And, uh, you know, BD's closer to my age. Yeah. So I was like vibing with him. Mac was dope too, but like BD and I like really clicked just like naturally and uh, just started talking to him. I'm like, yo, can I'm new. <laughs> they said, you know, we like what you did. Can you show me around? Maybe we could do a track. And he took me to Soy Sauce uh, Studios, Tough Sound Recording Studios. Yeah. And this is when I like first time stepped into a real booth and did uh, two freestyle songs with BD. One was over the Scary Movie instrumental. Yeah. Um, and then there was another Mob Deep instrumental. I think it was called Legal Money. And this song actually has Shaquille O'Neal on it. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's a Mob Deep song. And we did those two songs. And um, we just vibe from there. Like we put them out, and like people started That's paying dope. attention. And then uh, shortly after, man, I think I dropped my tape, the uh, season one. Yeah. And then during season one, I met Shade Cobain, who's another producer in Pittsburgh. So meeting Shade Cobain and also working with BD Varsity Squad actually started with three people. It was BD myself and Shay Cobain who was the producer and he was supposed to produce the whole album of the Varsity Squad he actually produced the first Varsity Squad song because we started as the three of us yeah and um, the first show we did was for we opened up for Method Man and Red Man at the altar in Lawrenceville and this is when we introduced Varsity Squad to City of Pittsburgh and um, it was dope so like after that bro it was just you know off we're, <laughs> we're off um, That's Shay wild. Co- yeah, it's, it was crazy. Um, Shay Cobain ended up leaving the group, and um, shout out to him though. It was, it's still all love. Yeah. And then uh, BD and I just stayed together. You know. That's interesting. To I never I, I I couldn't remember like how the shit came together. Now with your like uh you know your writing style obviously like 
you know, I listen to your lyrics and they're well thought out. Like, are you someone that is, does it come easy to you to write lyrics or is it like, you know, can you go off the top? Like, or like, what's better for you? Um, I could actually do both. Um, so, <laughs> um, I'll answer it. It's a two part. I'll answer yeah. it two parts. So my writing process, sometimes it comes easy. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm yeah. not going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, I write all the time. Cause that's not what I do. Um, my writing actually comes in waves for me because uh you know i do a lot of different shit yeah and music sometimes i don't feel like writing music so normally what i need is something to happen in my life that inspires me to write and then i'll write like songs for two weeks non-stop mm-hmm. and it's like super super easy but then i'll get into these blocks where nothing's coming out that i really like and i won't like i won't write for a few months yeah um but coming off the top I love coming off the top, actually, uh, with the freestyles and stuff. So there used to be a, a game called Rhyme Calisthenics. This is where I also kind of made my name in Pittsburgh. It was a freestyle game. And uh, are you familiar with Rhyme Calisthenics? No. So Rhyme Calisthenics, shout out to Shade and Delonia Stretch. It was a game. They had a wheel. It was kind of like the Wheel of Fortune. And there were 12 categories. Uh, it might be like Word Bank, Mirror Match, um, Cameo, uh, Crowd Topic. And you would sign up. I think there would be uh, 12 MCs, and each one would have to go up, spin the wheel in front of a crowded shadow lounge. Oh, this is all a shadow lounge? Yeah, this is all a shadow lounge. Oh, wow. It would be like packed from the front to the back of the wall. Jeez. Um, so if it landed on crowd topic, the host of the show is going to get crowd topics Boys from are just the people. yelling shit out. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you got 45 seconds to perform that and you get scored by judges and wow. they put uh they pit um instrumentals so yeah man i played ram cow and that's like i really made my name uh a little bit and got a lot of people's attention um you know i didn't win any of them yeah but i always i won't say always after the first time the first time i got booed because i suck <laughs> <laughs> right and i was like oh fuck that i'm coming back yeah and i came back and started killing it and each time i would get further and further um so I think I made it to like the second or third round the second time. And then like the last two times that I played, I made it to the, the final round and would always lose at the end. Yeah. You know? Um, but still, they put me up on their website because I kept coming back and I kept like That's improving dope. each time. So I was like part of the Ram Cal team, even though I didn't win one, you know? That's dope though. Um, yeah, it was cool. Now, are you uh, are you someone that gets like nervous about stuff? Like the first time you performed, like were you like were you sick about it? Um, yeah, I was definitely nervous, dude. Like even performing, and I got something in my throat. That's all right, good. Even performing, just like without the Ram Cal stuff, I was definitely nervous. But you know, um, I had to get used to it, really. Yeah, you know, especially at Ram Cal because you got to go off the top. Sometimes there were written categories, but um, yeah, I just kind of had to let it flow. And actually. To get over those nerves, I used to drink a lot before the shows. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like that would help you out. Yeah, because I was like, my nerves are gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a funny story. <laughs> funny story. Um, there was one time, BD and I had a show. I forget who we were performing. We were at the Shadow Lounge, but we both got hammered before the show, <laughs> and we were doing a Varsity Squad song. BD did his part, and I'm up there drunk as fuck, dude. I'm drunk as hell. So it's time to say my verse. I ended up saying BD's verse and just, like, stopped halfway and realized, like, damn, I just completely fucked it up because I'm repeating BD's verse after you already spit. Yeah. And after that time, I was like, all right, I'm done drinking <laughs> <laughs> before shows. Um, I used to get hammered just to, like, get those nerves off. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely uh, – it got to be crazy because uh, – you know, I don't really have anything to equate it to besides for like I did stand up, you know, right, and that's probably wild. It was wild because, you know, I never did it before. So yeah. like the first time I did it, you know, I I like I never been more scared of anything in my life because it was for like a whole packed uh it was for a packed improv down at the waterfront. Oh, that's and that it had to be scary. Well, it was it was crazy because like uh I interviewed a comedian on here. His name's Matt Light and uh, okay. I told him I was like, you know, you know, I always wanted to do it too and he's like, "Well, I'm doing a competition uh in like a month. You know, I'll sign you up." And the way it is is you get matched up against someone, you each get 5 minutes and then the crowd uh, you know, votes who's better between them two. So 
you know, I've, I've always been writing shit. Like I've always wrote comedy. I've always loved it. Watch movies, all this shit. And, uh, I get there and it's like, I, I've never been more scared in my life. Mm. I felt like I was going to go puke in a fucking bathroom, like, <laughs> like fucking be rabbit or something. How many but times did you do it? I made it all the way to the final round. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was, uh, I was pumped about it. I appreciate it. I, I, it went well the first time, but it was like, once I did that first one, I was like, we're good. Uh, you know, okay. Like, you just got it done. I cool. got up yeah, there cool. and, and, and it went well. And I, and I felt like I was on like fucking drugs or something. As soon as I got off, I was like floating, you know, everyone's like, yo, that's dope. Like I had friends there and they're like, you fucking killed it. And I'm just like, you know, like this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. And, uh, but it's interesting because I feel like, you know, the whole rap scene is maybe less unforgiving, you know, like, you know, people were just going to boo you off stage. Yeah. I've seen people, I got booed off stage and, and I've seen people get booed off the stage. And too. I've talked to people like, I think I talked to Billy Hoyle about like how crazy shadow lounge was because, uh, I remember I was there one time and they booed people. Yeah. The they will fuck boo. Off. Yeah. They will boo you the fuck off. And dude. like, that was like, uh, you know, that was a scary place. <laughs> Could not be whack up there. Right? I know. <laughs> and like, that's why like for you to be up there and do that, like that, that's interesting to think about like the yeah. whole dynamic of all that. Yeah, Shadow Lounge, man. If like if you if you made a name at Shadow Lounge, like back then there was like oh, you would respect it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, I was definitely down there, man. I just made it a point, like oh, I can't be what, <laughs> you know. Now were you uh, were you someone that was like you know would you be like in your room like trying to like you know like I, I guess you would call it practicing. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I even do that now. Yeah, um, but like before a show, I'll practice. You know, the week leading up to the show. You so, be forgetting lyrics. Yeah, I forget my lyrics for sure. I definitely do. That's all um, right. I, there's a trick though to that. Like it really all depends. You know, sometimes I forget my lyrics. Like earlier on, yeah. if I forgot my lyrics. Some people could tell, like if they know me. But yeah. if I'm at, like a show somewhere up in, so somewhere people don't really know me, I forget my lyrics. They're not going to know because I'm just going freestyle and just go on until yeah, the whole comes back. Yeah, you vibe off right. of it. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, yeah. That's a, I've always like been curious about that because I've listened to, I listen in. I've listened to Ready to Die probably a thousand times through, and it's like I still don't know all the lyrics. Yeah. I never was someone who was able to remember lyrics, but I can remember like whole dialogues of movies. Like, mm, well, see, that's something I can't remember. Entire dialogues of movie, dumbass shit. Like how much pizza costs in Home Alone and shit. You know, dumbass. One hundred twenty-two fifty. That's <laughs> that how much a pizza yeah, was. One hundred twenty-two fifty. I remember one twenty-two and an eight was the address of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the 90s movie whenever they were getting pizza delivered. Ah, he said 122 and an 8. 122 and an 8. And he put Boom. it down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Just random right. shit like that. But I can't remember lyrics for the life of me. Yeah, as soon as you said it, it came right back. I had the visuals and everything. Now, I'm interested because it's like, you know, you speak a lot on like mental health. You know, you talk about, mm. you know your you know the battles that you're going through and shit like that and i think that that's you know i think it's interesting and like uh you had uh you had uh uh you had a lyric and i think it was a therapy song that was talking about how uh black men don't seek out mental uh, yeah, help yeah, 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 yeah. and it's yeah, like i'm curious like where did this where did like your you know kind of like interest with like you know self you know, reflection. Oh, and, where did alcohol come from? Yeah, because it's oh. interesting. So you listen to the Hollywood divorce, right? Yeah. That is inspired from my life. Yeah, I, I mean, you can tell. <laughs> like, in um, my divorce, like, I was hurting, you know? Yeah. Just, like, fucked up. Dude, making mistakes and just, like, not really knowing how to, like, navigate life in the proper way. And, um, yeah, man, making the bad decisions. And that's why, you know, like, it took me six years to make that album because I was kind of going through it, piecing back and forth, what do I need and uh, to put in there, but also living it at the same time and trying to heal. Um, I checked myself into therapy, yeah, you know, and uh, it helped. I was seeing positive changes. Um, I actually started going to church, like Bible study, because I was just really trying to... Were you religious beforehand? So... I went to a Catholic school yeah. since kindergarten up until ninth grade. Yeah. But I always found myself spiritual, really. Just see, just one I of like those that kids way to describe like, it. Spiritual. You know? And uh, yeah, I was just like looking up stuff. The cult as a kid and just like all weird types of weird shit. Yeah. Vampires, like, you know what I mean? Just being curious <laughs> Yeah, about just it. mad curious. And um, you know, man, it didn't make any sense at the time. And I had a couple 
uh, situations happen to me that like made me question things about life, like in high school. Yeah, and um, just like like my the veil got lifted like once or twice. I'm like, oh shit, is that what I really kind of noticed right there? You know, and then uh, things just kind of stop. So you know, during my divorce, since you know I am, I believe in God and whatever, you know, no disrespect to whatever anybody else is doing, but that's just me. I believe in God in the universe. Um, I needed to check myself in therapy. And then I also uh, had to go like into church because I lost my faith. Yeah. Completely gone. Cause I was like a fucked up. Yeah. Like why does this happen to me? You know, if I'm following and being, uh, you know, why, why would this happen to me? All this terrible stuff. Dude, be honest with you, I wasn't even following shit. Like I was like doing some fucked up stuff, you know. Yeah. What I mean? And uh, like Hollywood divorce was like me writing, me doing shadow work on myself and just like really telling the world who the old John was because I had to kill that person. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, to be a new man who I am today. So uh, yeah, and how I did that, man. You know, I started going to church, Bible study. I got baptized on my 30th birthday. And it's like that little spiritual journey right there on its own helped me to understand what it meant to love someone, love myself, uh, you know, be a better man, father, husband, person in general. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how it started, really. Like, that was like the one path, one the start of my spiritual journey, like for real. Right when you were around 30, huh? Yeah. Yep. It's interesting because it's like I grew up in a I grew up going to church Catholic, you know, I went through uh, you know, confirmation, all that all the way up until 8th grade and then, you know, I just stopped. And uh and uh I just talked to that rabbi, you know, yeah, yeah, a couple a cool, weeks ago. Cool show. That was a cool. I appreciate episode. that. But it's like, you know, I'm 30 now and it's like I have like uh you know, I'm a little bit more conscious of like, you know, my physical and mental health and mm-hmm. it's like I, I tend to find myself thinking about shit on a deeper level. And uh, I've talked to Ralph about this, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. he, uh, you know, we'll get into some crazy conversations just about like wild shit because it's like Ralph is a perfect example of someone who was just like wild, had a completely different life, you know, right. grew up in McKeesport, <laughs> you know, he just like listening to like, you know, crazy hood ass rap and shit like that. And now he's like a yoga practitioner yeah, that's like got crystals up in his house. I got crystals too. <laughs> I know. And I'm just like, I'm just like it's crazy how that shit happens. Now, man. do you think now, now while we're on that topic, do you think that that's like, you know, the people, you think people look at that weird? You uh, know, yeah, they definitely do. They definitely do. Why do you think that is? Cause people are judgmental. A hundred percent. They're super judgmental. Like, but, but why do you think that is? <sighs> um, why do I think people are judgmental? or Why, why do you think people just, just look at it, hate on like, you know, okay. the crystals and shit uh, like that? So look, they think, a lot of religious people think it has to do with the devil. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm just going to keep it 100. Yeah. And, um, you know, me personally, um, it's, it's normal shit. Like people, you have to think like back in the day, like even astrology, right? Yeah. The minds, thousands of years ago, they were using the stars to fucking navigate through life and predict shit. So yeah. like, you know, when religion came out, it religion, to my opinion, can be weaponized and used like the demonized people and just like kind of just control everything. The reason doing, why right? war is happening. It's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's sort of like religion shit. But um, I just think, you know, for the ones with an open mind, it's, it's cool for them yeah. to just kind of look at um, but people just hate on shit, man. They I do. Mean, they, they just hate on everything. Like, you know, we can sit here and drink this Turner's tea and people will fucking hate. 100%. Like, <laughs> why are you drinking Turner's tea? Oh, that's bullshit. 100%. And, um, people hate on all kinds of shit. All types of shit. It's interesting to think about that, though, because it's like, I'm definitely more open-minded uh, than I used to be. You know, I, I often refer to, you know, the way I was younger. Uh, I used to make surface decisions. Mm. You know, I would call them surface decisions because, you know, I just did shit just to do it. I never thought about it. Fucking too, bro. You know what I mean? Like I talk about it. My biggest example is football. It's like I play football my entire life. I have no fucking idea why. No idea why. And I think about that to this day. Like, you know, what was the reasoning that I did all that and that I didn't like, you know, pursue something else that I wanted to. And it was just like I was following along a path. Do you think like 
that you know your your parents or somebody influenced you to just like yo you need to play football because of your size or like what I think I think whenever I was younger you know my brother was athletic he played basketball baseball football you know all this shit and it's like you know I th- I think that because I was you know I'm a bigger dude right my dad was like you know play football and it's like <laughs> it did the same shit to me I didn't <laughs> play football but they fucking made me play basketball because I'm tall as hell yeah I suck at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I, I was just good at football because I was big, but it's like, once I got into it, it's like I made, it was like I had blinders on. Mm -hmm. I had no, I had no really, you know, deep thought into like why I was doing it. I kind of just, you know, went along with the flow of everything else. And now, you know, full circle, uh, I turned 30 and like, I start to like think of life in a deeper way. You know what I mean? Like start to think about like, like the way I am as a person and the way that I carry myself and who I am as a man. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the trust that people put in me whenever I give them their word. And it's just like, that stuff is so important to me now. And, uh, I just want to, you know, I, I reflect on that a little bit more, but I know that there's a lot of people that don't. And I could tell that like, you're someone who like reflects on yourself and like what you do. I have no choice, man. Like, (laughs) Because I was, like, really, really in a bad spot, bro. Like, bad, bad spot, man. And, uh, again, <laughs> um, you know, the big man the big man upstairs. Help, it, help straighten <laughs> yeah, it out. Just, just help me straighten it out. Like, yo, like, I'm I, here. I love hearing about that. Come this way. Just get your faith back. Yeah. And I had to kill that old John and just get back to myself, like, who I was. Because I was also influenced by a lot of shit yeah. that... I had no business doing yeah for so fucking long yeah you know that makes sense <laughs> even like cheating i mean like, we're impressionable yeah you know yeah. what i mean it's it, it, you know when, when you know temptation is is crazy whether it be something as far as like you know taking the easy way out on something you know cheating whatever it is it's like you know it's interesting to think about decisions that you made in the past whenever like your mind's a little bit more clear mm-hmm. you know what i mean because like I, i'm happy with the place that i'm at uh, mentally, you know, where I am in life. And, and I, I often think about things in the past, you know, a little bit deeper and be like, why, you know, like, why the fuck did I do it like that? You know, but I often come to the, you know, the conclusion that, you know, I was young and, you know, no one's, no one, no one can tell you shit back in the day. Yeah. As long as you heal from it. Exactly. Learn from it and grow from it. It's all good. Because I also, I believe everything happens for a reason. I do believe that. You know what I mean? I I went through this shit for a reason. I really do believe that. I'm a new person. I'm a better person than I was yesterday. I like that. That's what matters. Now, uh, can I ask where the whole, uh, now how do you even pronounce it? Reiki? Reiki. Reiki. Yeah, Reiki. Now, the first time that you were on my radar with like wanting to interview you was because of that because I don't know shit about it. Oh, for real? Yeah, you were (laughs) posting all this stuff about it and like I think you invited me to like your Facebook page and I was like kind of look into it a little bit more and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, a lot of people say, I said that when I first was introduced to it too. What the fuck is this? Where does that even come from? Can you explain? Explain what it is, and then I want to I want to know how it came into your yeah, life. Yeah, so <laughs> Reiki is a Japanese form of energy healing yeah. that started like three thousand years ago. Yeah. Now that's what they say in the textbooks. What I've recently been learning though is that they've been doing Reiki, like it started in Egypt, out in Africa. That's what I've been discovering. Same thing with the yoga shit. I've yeah. Been discovering that recently, like fucking. Uh, uh, Ancient Kemet, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah back in, uh, in Egypt. So, yeah. But what Reiki is, is pretty much with the energy healing, as a Reiki practitioner, I am able to tap into the energy source from the universe. And I'm a conduit. So it flows through me and will transfer into uh, the person that is receiving the Reiki. And what I'm tapping into is the energy that we're, and taken right now yeah it's all plants, around us yeah, it's all around us plants rocks all that like it's here so you know as a reiki practitioner you're able to tap into that pull from that source and clear out the mud that we carry and the chakras yeah you can also clear out the chakras yeah. balance those as well um as a reiki practitioner but yeah it's just flushing out your system and reiki is actually going to clear out stuff in your life that is no longer serving you because it's going to push that to you right it's going to push you in that direction and when i say that you might start noticing 
some different things about your friends. Like, ah, oh, well, I really don't, I shouldn't be around this person. Why am I hanging around this guy? And I'm starting to notice that, damn, it kind of makes me feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like maybe even your job, whatever, like the food that you're eating, like yeah. your whole body's going to start to change around and regulate and put you in a more positive pathway. So my bad, I'm on, I'm on call for work, so I'm just making sure. That's that all right. No, you're on. good. Um, but yeah, man. Um, I was like, what the fuck yeah, is that? Yeah, I thought that was my phone. I was like, my what? Bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what it is. And Where does that even come out? Like, how do you even get involved with that? Oh, uh, man. So, dude, like, that's why I'm so excited to talk to you because, like, I've been through so much shit. And there's a lot of stuff that we could talk about today. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, yo, what the fuck? Just like while I was talking to Ralph. That's right. Time. I got <laughs> an open mind. Yeah. We, um, when Ralph called me, I talked to Ralph for the first time on the phone. We talked for like an hour. And he told me, he, t- our- <laughs> he messaged me immediately after. He was like, bro, you got to get John Quest on and talk about this yeah. shit because it's wild. Yeah, it was wild. He was, like, even his shit was wild. But how I got introduced to Reiki, um, dude. <sighs> So my mom died in 2018. Yeah. Uh, October 2018. She just died unexpectedly by a heart attack. Unexpectedly. Unexpectedly. Yeah. We were at our house the night before. My kids and I, everything was cool. She was super fucking healthy. Everything was straight. And the next day, that was it. She's just gone. And um, I was at work. Got the phone call. Ended up leaving work, going there. And it was a wrap. So like three days later, I'm like completely fucked up. My mom raised me. My dad, shout out to him, but I'm gonna just keep it 100. He had his issues and he really wasn't around. Yeah, I so heard that in your lyrics. You know what I mean? It's my mom and I. And she was my best friend. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like completely the fucked world's up. Torn yeah, apart. Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm laying on the couch, dude, and I can hear her talking to me, like telling me that she's sorry. But her time has came, and she has to go. And Jeez. bro, it was so crazy. It was like six o'clock in the morning. Like <laughs> I was laying there, and there was no doubt in my mind that was my mom. Like I heard her talking to me. So it was around. Ah uh, man, I think it was around like uh, February ish. February ish when I like started to learn how to meditate, and then the other thing too. Actually, I think this is what jump started it. And I'm hoping we can talk about this a little bit later. Yeah. But after my mom died, I said, fuck it. I went to Amsterdam for like seven days. And did really? Shrooms. <laughs> I did magic truffles out there. Wow. And um, I took a high ass dose. I, I just went by myself because I needed to get away. I took a high ass dose. You went to Amsterdam by yourself? Yeah, dude. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, three, uh, like, uh, three days later, after she passed away, I was like, I'm out. Wow. <laughs> um, and... The, the the magic truffles that I did like opened my mind even more to shit. So I think like that was like the jump start, and this was my first time. That's the veil that that's like <laughs> part of the one of the veils that yeah. lifted up. And um, that was like a crazy. That's another crazy story I can share. But <laughs> um, I learned how to meditate by a psychic that I met on online, dude. I was just like searching for shit. And the reason why I was searching for shit, because I was at work uh, downtown and was in a, a meeting. So I'm just sitting in a meeting and I see a fucking light orb floating around in the fucking meeting, but no one else can see it but me. And I had this feeling of love like in the room. So after that, the meeting ended, I went to my computer and just started looking up like a spiritual mentor. Yeah. And nothing came up in Pittsburgh. And then I found this psychic on thumbtack.com. She had no picture up, but she had like, 35 star reviews yeah and every comment was like oh she said this date was going to happen and it did blah 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 so i'm like fuck it i'm gonna call her it's only 15 bucks she tells me some bullshit whatever it's 15 dollars. yeah so she calls me that night and blows my mind away in fucking 15 minutes really (laughs) yeah she knows shit about me that i've never told anybody yeah and at the end of the phone call she's like hey i also want to tell you that you have gifts um you're a healer and you're an empath. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so she's like, look, I can teach you how to meditate and open up your third eye and tap into those gifts. So, bro, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to pay her the price that she's asking for. 
and fucking go for it and see what the fuck's up going to happen. Did any part of you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, did cool. any part of you in the beginning, like, are you a skeptical person ever? No, I'm not, because I'm not, because I've seen enough in my life, like, spiritually, yeah. that I know there was, I always knew that there was something more yeah. out there than what we can fucking see. Yeah. And I've been to a few psychics before this one, and uh, her name is Mary, really, really good friend of mine she's actually like she's around like 70 or 80 i still go to her house now for a reading because she was always on point bro wow always on point she would just pull out the tarot cards and be like hey i see this for the like the next six to 18 months and just like give you a forecast and the shit would happen and all i was just like i was just paying attention to like the career the love like oh we're this and that, but she always told me to learn how to meditate and focus on my third eye, but I never paid attention to that shit. Mm. Never. And it didn't make sense until now why she kept telling me that for all these years. Wow. Um, When was this? When did you start going to her? uh, So I went to Mary, I think my son was like two at the time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> she was yeah he was so like you're like two. a decade ago yeah 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 but I went with my mom it yeah. was a psychic party my mom was scared to do it she just wanted me to go with her yeah and my mom was terrified because she was like I'm not fucking with that shit she yeah. was super religious yeah for sure <laughs> but she got invited from a friend at her job and she didn't want to be an asshole and not go yeah so I went I was like fuck it I'll do it you know and I did it and uh, I went back every year after that for like I always go around my birthday yeah some shit or like every couple years. But just knowing Mary and then meeting the one that told me she could teach me how to meditate and she already blew my mind away within 15 minutes, I knew that this was something I needed to go dive into some more. And uh, she taught me how to meditate. She actually lives in Washington State, bro. I never seen her. We would just text and like talk over FaceTime and she would give me the instructions and I caught on really quick, like super fucking fast. In two weeks, my third eye like fucking cracked open. And like a lot of shit <laughs> started to happen at that point. It came easy to you. Yeah, super, super easy, bro. It was wow. like natural. Like, That's wild. Yeah, it really was, man. Because it's, it's hard for me to even, uh, you know, like I try to, uh, I try, I'm sorry, it's cold. No, it's cool, bro. I'm over here shivering. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Skinny. It, it's interesting because it's like, you know, I, I just started like thinking of, uh, I mean, not not thinking, of, but I just started like going to yoga and like doing them uh, sensory deprivation tanks uh, and yeah, everything like that. Once. And it's like, you know, uh, I guess it's a form of meditation, vinyasa, like breathing and shit like mm. that, five in, five out. And it's like, it's hard for me to even like do that. I'm able to do it a little bit now. Like when, like the last time I did the float tank, I was able to slip into it a little bit quicker, but I... It, it took me, you know, the first time I was in there, it's hard to do. It's almost I only like. I did it once. It's, it's like almost like, I mean, it don't even matter if you're floating or if you're doing yoga or anything like that. Just your breathing and like meditating in your breathing. You know, sometimes I will wake up in the morning and just try. Like I listen to fucking, you know, Joe Rogan talk about meditation and shit like that. Yeah, so it's I like, like you know, it's like I, I want to be able to like kind of get to this point. And like I would try to breathe in, breathe out. But it's always like something like you know, was distracting in my mind. I was never able to like, you know, be clear. And, uh, the only time I've ever been able to like really get like that is like, um, if it's like crazy, super hot yoga, okay. uh, like, uh, Ralph does yoga at that yoga flow. It's like, that's the hottest place I've ever been doing it. And, uh, I, you know, I'll be able to get into it there. But then, uh, you know, the second time I was in that float tank, I was able to like get to it there where it's like, you know, breathe in where it's like, it's almost like, I feel like, uh, like, you know, just like I'm, I'm existing there. It's mm-hmm. like, and, uh, it, it was so interesting, but it's like a lot of people will have trouble trying meditate. to get into the yeah, meditation. For sure, bro. And it's like, do. it's interesting to hear that it came easy to yeah, you. It came so fucking quick, bro. Same coat. So quick. And then the crazy part is like, I was getting so deep in the meditation that I was able to communicate with my mom. Like she started popping up, bro. And I was talking to her, and then that's when I was like, oh, shit. I'm so sad, but now this is a way I can communicate with my mom, her spirit. Like, I could see her, feel her. Like, the shit was happening 100%. Yeah. So that just made me want to do it it even more. Like, because I'm now, I can contact my mom, even though she's crossed over to the other side. Yeah. I'm starting to become happy again. So I was, like, meditating uh, fucking two, three times a day, bro. I actually quit my job. Actually, I walked away from a DevOps engineering job (laughs) and quit. I was like, fuck this. I'm going to learn how to meditate 
and do yoga and Reiki for these next few months and just travel. When did this happen? This was in May 2019 because my mom passed away in 2018. I started meditating around February 2018 and just like, just only really focusing on the meditation. But like by that time, shit was happening so damn fast with the meditation. I was at work. My boss pissed me off. I was just like, man, fuck this. I'm not, I don't need to work. I don't need to do this anymore. It's just a job. Just a job. Yeah. I'm going to quit and learn how to meditate and travel. <laughs> so that's what I did. Uh, or not even learn how to meditate, meditate even more and do yoga. Yeah. And I got into Kundalini yoga and, um, yeah, man, that's all I did. And they say that happens when you have a spiritual awakening. That's what I went through. When my mom passed away, I went through a spiritual awakening. Yeah. And uh, the, first, the first sign that happens to a lot of people, first thing I should say, that go through a spiritual awakening, they always want to quit their nine to five because it's just something, they're, they're now out of the matrix yeah. and that whole rat race doesn't fit them anymore. So it's like a conflict with your energy. Mm. And that's what I went through. And uh, <laughs> the crazy thing is, the day that I decided to quit my job, I went into the server room and cut out all the lights and just meditated. <laughs> and then that's when I got my answer to just walk away from the shit and Jeez. I'll be I'll be okay. Wow. And, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I did. And that's when I got into Reiki as well. That's where somebody, uh, my friend Amber, she's a witch. She has a shop and stuff like that. So she sent me a message on Facebook like, hey, you should check this out. And looking into Reiki, I'm like, damn, that's energy healing. The lady told me I was a healer. Meditation, I got visions and fucking answers that I'm a healer and do this. And now they just all came together. Fell into place. Yeah, man. That's, so that's wild. Yeah, dude. So how long have you been? So so is there different levels? Yeah, so there's different levels. Um, there are four levels in being a Reiki practitioner. And then there's also different types of Reiki. Yeah. Um, so I am the Gendai Reiki. And then there's like the Yusui, Yusui Reiki. That's like the traditional uh, type of Reiki. Then you have like uh, Kundalini Reiki. There's all different types of Holy Fire Reiki. They all do something different. Yeah. But it's all energy healing. Um, so, uh, damn, what was your question? I fucking lost my shit. I was saying, I was saying like, is there levels? Okay, of- yeah, there's levels. Yeah, so there's four levels. There's level one, um, level two, level three, which is the, the master. On yeah. level one and two, you're just a practitioner. Then level four, you're a master teacher, and you're able to teach other people how to do it. Um, wow. So, again, <laughs> there's always, like, if you look it up, they, they put a, a time limit on, uh, I won't say a time limit. There's a, uh, there's a, I can't even think right now. There's a, uh, a time gap. Period? Yeah, time period. Yeah. Between you can go to levels. Like, they want you to do level one for like a couple years, mm-hmm. level two, blah, blah, blah. But I was catching one so damn quick. And my teacher was like, yo, you need to just keep going. Because you're learning so fucking fast. Yeah. <laughs> and now, um, is this shit that you're like obsessed with? You're just coming home reading about it and yeah, doing all that? Because that's another symptom of going through a spiritual awakening. Yeah. I'm like deep in a rabbit hole at this point, all on YouTube, reading old esoteric books about yeah. stuff. And uh, yeah, my teacher, he was a shaman. And I just went to you know his training and just like doing that shit, learning from him. I was just like catching on faster and faster. And um, each Reiki level, there's an attunement. It's kind of like an initiation. So the teacher will, um, you know, do what they have to do. And then you get the symbols kind of like pushed into your body and blessed into uh, being a Reiki practitioner. And each level comes with different symbols. And uh, different symbols can be used for different things. And just like it's just like a higher, higher level. And then you're much more of a, like a bigger flow yeah. through the energy. Um, so yeah, man, I was just catching on like really quick and my teacher was just encouraging me like, Hey, even though, you know, the, the, the time didn't go, uh, where I said it should go, you need to do this because you're catching on so quick. And it was just like natural, bro. Jeez. Um, I was doing a lot of shit, bro. I was doing a lot of experimenting, um, psychedelics. Like I was like going through like my own (laughs) shamanic school really just by myself and nobody knew what I was doing except for uh, one of my friends, uh, Amber and my teacher and like the people that was in that community. Yeah. But nobody else knew what I was going through. Now, did you ever do psychedelics before you got into this? 
Um, so I did psychedelics in Amsterdam. That, that was, was the first, first time. time. Yeah. Then I came back. Was like, yo, I need to keep going. Now, from <laughs> your first time doing it, then to like whenever you're like, you know, into the different levels of it, is there a difference? Yeah, there's a huge difference. Like you were able to go deeper. Yeah, it's a huge difference, man. It's a huge difference. Um, That's interesting to think about that. <sighs> oh, man, that shit got crazy. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, mushrooms is like, uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, a bridge to a different you know, a different Island, you know? Yes, it is. And it's like, you know, you go over there. I did them in high school and, uh, you know, I was never a big drug person. You know what I mean? I was never a drug person, but like, it's I plant medicine. It's, yeah. It's medicine. It's medicine. So like, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to eat some mushrooms. You know, it was like a senior. I was like, fuck it. We're going to eat mushrooms. And, uh, I ate these mushrooms and like, you know, I've, I remember like looking at a tree and like being able to see, you know, almost looking like blood go through their veins, like mm, of the bark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing leaves like breathe. Like shit, yeah. And I just remember thinking like, like this is the wildest shit ever. Yeah, it it, it made wild. me feel like instead of it just being a tree, instead of this just being a plant, like, and, and us just like, you know, taking it for granted, it's like, you know, this is, it's alive. It is alive. Bro. Energy it, through there. there. Are, yeah. And, it uh, is. you know, it, it's interesting to think about like how, you know, <clears throat> It's almost like you said, a veil. Like that's the best way to do it. Uh, yeah. Unless you like do something that takes away that veil, you don't understand what is there. Yeah, you're not going to know. Yeah, and it sounds crazy. You're it like, bro, I crazy. could talk to people and like do this and do that, but you're like, honestly, you know, like it, it, it's it's not too crazy once you you know have somewhat of an experience like that. It's, I mean, I, <laughs> for me, like right now, there's definitely like levels. To it, I'm I'm not no master by any means. Right? Yeah. I'm always a student, but um, in my last couple of years, it's definitely been a wild ride. Um, psychedelics definitely played a part. And when I say psychedelics, I mean shrooms, acid. I did that for a little bit. Yeah, but like I wasn't doing it to just like party. I was doing these psychedelics and meditating. And, yeah, for 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 a yeah. reason. <laughs> you know, like and um, going on shamanic journeys, like in my fucking living room. Uh, go on YouTube and there's this guy Michael Horner and it's a 30 minute shamanic drum beating and I'm just sitting mm. there on psychedelics going on a shamanic journey like meeting my spirit animals and like doing crazy shit did Ralph tell you about gong yoga? he did tell me about gong yoga honestly <laughs> alright so Ralph was like you know get in here you know this is the wildest shit you he ever do in your too. life he told me that I, th I need to do it again because, you know, it was kind of sick for me in the beginning. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I was fully into the yoga. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm all for yoga. That's that's healing right there. It is. I just couldn't get into the gong yoga the first time I did it. <laughs> I need to do it again. Why? Bro, was, my man was walking around barefoot just like you could hear like his feet <laughs> tapping around my head. And then like he's just right above you that's with, a, with a big ass thing. Just like. <laughs> and you're just like, you know, you could feel it. But Ralph is like. Bro, it'll 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 vibrate your chakras until they're completely yeah, clean. Like the cells and all that shit. Yeah. And it's like, well, that it, it takes. You know, you have to like. That's a tool. You know, that's like someone giving you a tool, but you don't know how to use it yet. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be able to like learn how to use this shit. Yeah, you but, do. But uh, I do want to be able to. I do, I want to go back to it because Ralph speaks of it. Yeah, I missed the last one. He invited me to. I think there's one a couple of weeks ago. I missed it. The way he speaks about it, you know, it makes me feel like I'm not doing something right because like I need to be able to get yeah. to where he is with it. You know who also did that? Joe Rogan with the uh, the tanks, the yeah. float tanks. Like he made it sound like it was something. Super, super crazy. And when I went for my first time. Yeah, you feel like you're going to be just floating off in a void of like psychedelic, you know, imagery. And, you know, you're able to like, you know, because he says it. He's like, you know, you can get in there and trip balls. Yeah, so yeah that and, didn't happen to me. And that's what, uh, <laughs> you know, I got to link you up with the people from Levity. Uh, they are doing a podcast called uh, the Levity Floatcast where they'll, they bring you in. They interview you 20 minutes before you get in the tank okay. about like, you know, your thoughts about it, what you're feeling like now. And you go, you do an hour float and then you come back out and you talk about, talk it. about it. And like, that's what I said in the beginning. I, I've listened to Rogan since like, you know, since, the, you know, he, his episodes were in like the hundreds and uh, he's always talked about the sensory deprivation. So I've listened to it for so long that I felt like that I had like a cheat sheet into what to do uh, in what there. to do yeah, yeah yeah so it's like people if people go into there and they never learned about it you know it's a tool that you don't know how to use it's right. like someone handing okay. you a Maybe tool that you don't know how to use case because I, I started looking into it like 
when I found out I was about to go like three days before. Yeah. <laughs> like on YouTube and like searching shit. And but then. it's like listening to Rogan talk about like the way you like breathe and the way you're supposed to like, you know, kind of, you know, center yourself while you're in there. And mm-hmm. like, you know, eventually I'm sure you could get to that place where you're like tripping crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. But, you know, uh, Dave from Levity told me you got to go three times, you know, to be able uh, okay. to to start to do it because the first time you're in there, you're so overwhelmed with like a new experience of, you know, being in this little tube and it's weird and it feels mm-hmm. like you're floating because of all the salt in there. And it's just like a weird experience. It's like, you can't turn your brain off. And the second time you're in there, you're like, all right, I know this is a familiar place. Like I'm in here. I know what this feels right, like. Right. And the second time I definitely, it came a little bit easier to me for sure. Now I want to keep going just because, you know, I feel like you're going to, you know, the, the more you go, the more you're going to be able to get, get out of deeper it. Out of it get more out of it. But the deeper you can go. I agree with you, though. It's like, you know, people will give you a misconception and you let your assumptions like run off with it. Yeah, I think that's what I did. I but that's, that's all right. Yeah. You know, like that's that's natural. Like that's something right. that it you. It's natural. It's sure. something what I would expect from a lot of people. But it's like, you know, um, it's interesting to hear about everyone's like the way that they feel about things and the way they you know, the way they get to that point and how they process it in their mind. Mm -hmm. And it's such like a, you know, I don't know. It's more interesting for me now because, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm getting a little bit older and it's like, I'm more conscious of it. I'm just more conscious of like, you know, the way I kind of want my life to be and the flow that I have and the energy around me. Cause like, I've always been someone that's big with energy. It's like, I could tell if I'm going to vibe with someone immediately, Me too. immediately, even if it's off like, uh, you know, a second, like I work at, I worked at, uh, Threads on Carson was a clothing boutique. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, it's just immediately people could walk in and I could tell like, all right, that's- They're going to buy something. Good. Like, not yeah. even that, but just like that's a person that I could speak with. Ah, okay, okay. And that's it's just people, I, can, yeah. I just bad I'm vibes. Same way. I'm the same way. But yeah, there's uh, good vibes here. I, I, mean, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm yeah. sorry it's cold right now, but we're working here. I got to get a ceiling in here, a little bit no, of, we're good, bro. Little <laughs> bit of uh, insulation. Yeah, cool, yeah. Now, the yoga, though, I'm curious about the yoga because you said uh, I was reading your article that uh, just got put out and it said you had got a scholarship from the Amazing Yoga yeah, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yep. Now, what made you even want to, you know, kind of take that step into the world of yoga? Um, so I was just doing Kundalini yoga. Like on my own, but how did you even get into wanting to do yoga? Just through like the you know the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, it was just through the. Re- it was just like one thing after another, bro. Like the meditation, led spider to Reiki, web, and then Reiki led to fucking Kundalini yoga. Because Kundalini, you can uh, foc- you're focusing on the Kundalini energy that we all have at the- on the base of our spine. Yeah, and the goal is to rise that up. Yeah, to you know have another deeper. A kundalini awakening and yeah. like messing with the chakras and just all the books I was reading and kundalini yoga was the first type of yoga that I've done and all it is it's just really meditation and a couple movements and a lot of breath work so that's where I started with what's the difference between kundalini and vinyasa uh, vinyasa is more like the workout kind of active flow and you're, you're breathing but it's more like push ups and yeah like, like and 21 like m- movements or whatever yeah, it's like tw- uh, it's, yeah, it's like 21 25 movements depending on what you do you know my sequence is like 36 pieces but right it's now. more of a it's more active yeah moving around you're not sitting there chanting door mantras really uh, okay um, in my class though uh, we do uh, we do the alm chant in the beginning yeah. in the end because that's something that a we were doing in Kundalini yoga. Yeah. Uh, just kind of like set the tone. Brings everyone sound, together. Right. And um, yeah, so they're completely different. A lot of what I've learned is that when I would tell people I do yoga and I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm doing Kundalini yoga. And they're like, oh wow, you're doing that? <laughs> because again, you're sitting there meditating and the goal is to raise the Kundalini energy. And a lot of people that just do yoga, they're not doing Kundalini yoga. Yeah. Because Kundalini yoga is like some deep, deep type of yoga. And you're like, oh wow, okay. It's uh, it's interesting because I've never been to a class like that. I've only been to like you know vinyasa, hot yoga. Yeah, I've never done hot yoga. Honestly, dude, I I feel that I don't get a lot out of uh, a regular yoga. Like I can do yoga. Me and my wife will put a uh, like a video on yeah. and just do it here. But I, it's harder. It's almost like the first time I went into that sensory tank. It's like. I can't get to that place without that heat because that heat makes me go inside my brain and like kind of just like 
Because the first time I ever did hot yoga, like, dude, I'm I'm fat, all right? I'm big as hell. Ralph was like, bro, come on over here. Like, Because it, his be, is hot yoga, huh? Bro, I'm telling you. It was like, like 100 degrees, 90 degrees? What is it? Oh, it's like 100 and probably like 110. That's hot as fuck. It's, it was a wild. It, it's immediately you go in there and it it's the hottest you've ever been. Wow, and uh, crazy. you're doing all these, you know, movements. So, like, I got thrown into the wolves. You know, the first time I ever did yoga was actually Ralph came to my house and uh, gave me, like, uh, you know, it was before I interviewed him the first time. It was right before I interviewed him. I was like, Ralph, come on over. You know, we'll do, like, a little thing in the, in the living room, which uh-huh. wasn't hot, obviously. And then we just interviewed about his life and how he went from being someone that was fat as fuck that changed his yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to that one, too. And, and, like, he has such, like, an inspiring story because it's, like, you know, it's almost, like, it, it's so easy to – to keep to the regularly scheduled program, you know, smoking weed, listening to music, working just your nine to five, but like something about him wanting to pull out of that and get into something different. It like snaps something into my mind where I'm just like, you know, like there's other shit that is, that is possible to do. And oh, it's yeah, like, sure, man. There's so know, much shit out there. deep, you so can get deep. Shit, and it's man. just, however, and we live in this world where we can look up anything we want from this phone. Uh, and it's so crazy, but uh, I feel like the heat is like what gets me to be able to, uh, almost like a med- meditative state because oh, it's cool. like it's that's interesting. Cool. I'm interested to see. Uh, you, you should definitely do a hot one and, and see what's. Yeah, I want to. I want to actually. Amazing yoga is from what I heard like all hot yoga. Oh but yeah, like yeah. COVID was around, so um, we did our shit over Zoom for yeah. like a week. And um, yeah, I've never done hot yoga. And that was my first time even doing vinyasa yoga. I'm just going to be honest. Dude, I got the scholarship. They offered the scholarship. And I've never done vinyasa yoga. Yeah. Um, I went to one class before the training was going to start like the following Monday. And that was my first time doing vinyasa yoga. And that's the vinyasa flow yoga. Yeah. And that shit was hard, bro. It's it was, hard. It was not easy. It's hard. <laughs> you get out of there and you're yeah. fucking sweating. You oh, feel like yeah, you did crazy. a workout. Um. That whole week when I was doing yoga, like the training, it was like six hours of fucking That's yoga. That's what I was going to ask. Like, oh, is, it, is it like, it's every day. It's almost like a job, right? Yeah, it was every day. It was every day. Um, that shit was hard, bro. I would wake up at eight and I wouldn't be done till like 2.30. That's wild. Just doing yoga. Like we would start doing yoga and then we would go through it like three more times and then do each pose. Now, where does it come from with you with wanting to... You know, like there's people that could want to research things and get into it and people that could just practice yoga themselves. But where's the want for you to like want to be a teacher come from? Um, Because I just know this was part. This is part of my path. Yeah. This is part of my path. You know, that's a good answer. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I, I like I've, I've I could definitely see people like I see people in the same yoga class that we would go to. Mm-hmm. And it's like uh, there was this girl that was there every single time I ever been there. And she's nasty at yoga doing wild shit. Crow like is nothing side crow. <laughs> and uh, I could do the crow, but I can't do the side crow. I'm I can get the crow now. for about three seconds. Yeah, I could get it for like 20 now. I can I get it a little like bit. One or two. But it's like seeing other people that are like devoted that you're like, oh, she's fucking practicing this at home. And there's people that like want to just do that for themselves and have that that is their own thing mm. and just be a, be someone that participates. And then there's someone that has a want to, you know, communicate that to someone else. And like, I think that, uh, it was interesting to hear about Ralph because it's like, you know, what made you like want to communicate this and the way he spoke about, you know, the way it, it helps your mindset and the way I mean, that it, it helps does, your yeah. body, you know, it just makes you you know, it's almost like having a good uh, school teacher. You know, if you got someone that's whack, you're like, fuck, I don't want to be in this yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, sure. But if you got a good teacher, you're like, man, this person makes me excited about learning. Yeah. Makes me want to learn more about it. Um, for me, to be honest, bro, like there was an opportunity and I'm an opportunist. Yeah. After I investigate something. So I was like, ah, you know what? It's free. Let me just go ahead and apply and yeah. see what happens. So they gave it to me. Uh, but also uh, beyond that, it was another healing modality that I can use to help heal people. Cause I like that. I'm here to be a healer. Like I, I recognized this uh, early on in my spiritual journey. Yeah. Like this is what I want to do full time. I don't yeah. want to do the tech stuff. I want to do the healing full time. And I'm working my way up to that point. But um, yeah, it was just another healing modality to use because at that time I wasn't doing Reiki on people. I, was, I actually stopped. Yeah. Because I was going through another spiritual awakening myself in the way 
the the way Reiki works, like even if I get done with the client, I need to flush myself, brush their energy off because I was working with their energy yeah. and like recharge and ground myself. So when you're going through a spiritual awakening, you need to just come to times, just be a hermit and go through what you need to go through. And, and figure it out for with, yourself. Yeah, and not mess with anybody's energy. So getting into yoga, I was like, oh, I can learn this and still help heal people. And then when I'm ready to do Reiki again, I can offer that too. Ah. Um, so yeah, man, it's just another healing modality. And, uh, you know, like right, even right now, I'm learning how to do astrology, uh, be an astrologer. I saw you on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, you're yeah. like, give me your, your uh, <laughs> birth date. And you're yeah, like, I'll yeah, get back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, there's, a, there's a few tools under the belt, man, when it comes to the spirituality. And I'm trying to be that guy. I'm, I'm not even going to say trying because I actually took that on my vocabulary um, because words have spells. So I'm going to be that guy that has, uh, you know, the yoga, the Reiki. I want to be a Reiki teacher, like the Reiki master teacher, um, you know, astrology, um, a couple different things that resonate with me. I'm going to learn them so I can offer them to other people because it all helps to heal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, uh, this is this is still on top of it, kind of off. Yeah, now, what's up? do you have, do you notice any sort of difference with you writing your lyrics and you know, uh, rapping and shit like that after you've been into this like spiritual, you know, this spiritual uh, stage. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously if you listen to a lot of your old raps, it's like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of like, you know, hurt, anger, raw, all that. Raw, it's raw, raw dude. Yeah, it's for raw. Sure. For sure. That's just raw. Um, so that is an excellent question. Excellent question, my man. Um, so Hollywood divorce, super raw. All the other stuff before that, it's raw. You know, one foot in the streets, one foot out the streets, just talking about shit. Yeah. But uh, my new music, though, is going to is definitely going to sound. It's still going to be John Quest, but it's going to be you know the elevated. Yeah, the elevated, the conscious, the, the more deeper John Quest, heady it's, type shit. It's, it's still going to be John Quest, though. Yeah. Like you know, you're still going to the storytelling. Well, that's what makes you professional. Um, you 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 can incorporate the environment and your experiences in life yeah. in the same way without being, you know, it keeps you authentic. Yeah, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Now there's also going to be, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm a fucking guru. Cause I'm still a wild dude. Yeah. But you know, I'm just, I'm going to be talking about things that happened after my divorce. Yeah. And, uh, that's what I like to do. So just to give you an example, um, <laughs> There's a song that I really like. It's called 1111. Yeah. Um, but you know how you see 1111 on the clocks? And yeah. Shit like, but that's what, it's, that's what it's about, the synchronicities, the times that y'all are seeing. And it's my story about how when I was going through my spiritual awakening, like shit was going, I was seeing fucking spirits and <laughs> shit that's coming at me. And I'm like, damn, I'm seeing the clocks. It's 1111 now. It's 333. Like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of going crazy, but I got to go through it. Like yeah. talking to my spirit guides. Like you want to hear a song like that? Yeah. Uh, you'll hear a song about the time in Amsterdam when I took the psychedelics on my first trip. Um, you know, shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's interesting yeah. too. Uh, that's interesting. So your trip in Amsterdam, you're wearing a, we're wearing a t-shirt with a mushroom on it right now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, like, what made you want to go there specifically? Ah, uh, look, man, I actually had the trip already booked before my mom passed away. I booked it like two weeks really? before, and she was going to watch my kids while I was gone because it kind of landed on the same day that I had uh, my children. So my mom was going to help out while, you know, when it was dad's day. Mm -hmm. um, but she passed away, and thankfully, the the mothers of my children- yeah. They were like, yo, we'll watch them if you still want to go. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to stay here. I'm just going to go. So I went. And that was, that was that. It was my first time in Europe. It was now, a crazy time in Europe, though. I bet it was. Oh, I mean, man. I hear uh, <laughs> my boss from work, he grew up in Amsterdam. Uh, so he knows that. And yeah, he would tell me wild shit. Uh, yeah, Amsterdam was fucking wild, bro. And I, I have friends that traveled over there and told me wild shit. My, uh, my cousin was stationed over in England, and they traveled to Amsterdam. And, like, you know, if he's in the military. You can't have no... Uh, can't have you can't smoke no weed or nothing like yeah. that. So they ate mushrooms, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Dude, I ate the, like he was like, I went to a coffee shop, and there was a coffee shop. It was basically like a you know weed dispensary. They just have a different yeah, they got all different, different mushrooms and different he, strains they bought of mushrooms, laughing too. mushrooms. And he said, "Dude, I've I laughed until I almost threw up. Yeah. He was like, it was just never stopped. Yeah, so, was. like, were you were you scared? I was fucking terrified, bro. Because I mean, you just went through something fucking crazy. So it's like." You know, are you scared? Were you scared to eat these mushrooms and like 
I was face scared. your your experiences. I've never done psychedelics. Yeah. Ever, right? That's what I mean. Your first time and like it's after your mother passes <laughs> yeah, away right. and you're just like Jesus. I was just like fuck it. But I was scared because all the stories that oh, yeah. I've heard like growing up. Well like, you can't oh, listen to what other people psychedelics, say. Psychedelics, you're gonna go crazy. So I bought them, right? I bought them at the store. Yeah. Like I said, it's just a shop. You just walk in, they got all these different kinds. I bought them. And I am asking a dude for instructions, like, yo, how the fuck do I take these? Because they just look like fucking pieces like little nuts but they're they're, they're truffles because shrooms are actually illegal in Amsterdam yeah because they were too strong so yeah. they got the cousins which are the truffles and I bought them and I'm staying at a hostel at this time with a bunch of other people yeah I was at a hostel bro like yeah. in, a, in a room with a bunch of other people yeah I was in a dorm that's sick hospital yeah I'm, I say hospital hostel yeah dorm hostel it was called uh, it was called the bulldog hostel it was so dope, bro. You know why I was dope? I'm just going to say it on here. It was two blocks away from the red light district. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I was like right in a prime fucking wow. location. So, and I, I, I scoped out this spot because I wanted to be like in the center of all the fucking action. Yeah, of everything. And when I got to Amsterdam, I didn't even know it was like an electronic world festival happening in Amsterdam. So all these people all over the world were here and every club, bar that you can think of, hotel, they had DJs 24-7 just playing fucking electronic music everywhere. Really? So there's all these people. Holy in shit. Um, and I just walked into all this shit. And um, so I ended up buying the shrooms, though, with truffles. And I put them in my locker for like three days. Yeah. I, was just, I was just fucking see. I would look at them. <laughs> like, yeah, am I ready? No, nah, I'm not fucking ready. <laughs> and this guy from England, he, uh, he kept making fun of me because he, he was an older guy, but he was just traveling too. He's like, yo, you didn't take the, you didn't take the truffles yet? Everything's yeah. going to be all right. I'm like, no, nah, I'm kind of scared. He's like, oh, you're going to be fine. The next day, you take them yet? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do it. So I ended up taking them. I was like, fuck it. Ate them all. It was like 10 grams. Ate them all. 10 grams? Yeah, 10 grams of truffles. Holy shit. And um, bro, I'm sitting there in in the hostel, like in the bottom because the in, the, in the, the first floor of the hostel, it was a uh, a dining uh, area. Yeah. And then it was also a bar and like they played the DJs too. Yeah. So I'm sitting there in the fucking lobby, actually at the pool table, and they made me get sick and I threw up. Yeah. So the next day, I went back. I was like, yo, I threw up. What did I do wrong? And he's like, look. You didn't trip at all? No, no. I, I just threw him right up. Yeah. Because my stomach got so fucking sick. Yeah. Um, so I went back to the store and told him what happened. He was like, look, buy him again. Eat him on an empty stomach this time and drink some water or maybe eat some chocolates with it. So I did that. And again, I went back to the fucking bar and I'm sitting there. And I'm like, man, these shits aren't kicking in. Because by this time, it's like an hour <laughs> <laughs> fucking gone. And um, I'm sitting there in the sm- face. smoking weed. I'm smoking a joint. Man, and then all of a sudden I'm looking at my phone and shit just started fucking floating out my phone. <laughs> and I'm looking around the room and shit was just getting so slow. Wow. And this, this picture started moving and I went into fucking panic mode like, oh shit, it's starting to kick in. <laughs> and I ran up to my room and uh, I just sat in the bed for like two hours and I tried to listen to my music, but my music was so depressing. It was so much hurt yeah. and anger. I couldn't even listen to it. So I yeah. put on some Bob Marley. And this this uh, this young lady, she came in to the room. And um, actually, before I even go to that, I'm sitting in the bed. And there was only there was one guy uh, in the room. And there's eight beds in the dorm room that I'm sitting in. Yeah. Um, so the guy didn't speak English. He had his headphones on watching a fucking movie on Netflix. So I go to the bathroom and shut the door. As I'm sitting there taking a piss, I hear a fucking voice pop up like, hey, can I lick it again? It was this woman. I got super fucking scared and that's when I went into my bed and just sat there in the corner <laughs> like, yo, I'm fucking <laughs> tripping crazy. Um, so then, then this girl came in with her luggage. She, her fish on the luggage was like fucking floating and shit. And I went back downstairs after like a couple hours and... Um, it just started intensifying more and more. Yeah. And I put out a uh, a call on Instagram, like, oh, fuck, I took these shrooms. I don't really <laughs> think I like this shit right now. Like, I don't know what to do. And two of my friends from Pittsburgh hit me up and were like, yo, it's okay. We're going to walk you through it. And thankfully, they hit me up. That's dope. And walked me through it. Like, yo, it's going to be all right. It's going to come in waves. Just kind of relax. Maybe eat something if you want. So once they did that, I started to calm down and just rode the rest of the trip out. Um, 
But yeah, that was crazy. And then I tried to I tried to do something stupid and like walk around the fucking red light district and the strip on the rooms. Worst mistake, fucking ever. Because all the crazies, I feel like all the crazies knew that I was tripping. Yeah. And they were like coming to me. So I ran back to the fucking hotel that stayed there. <laughs> um, that, was, that was a wild time, man. That's definitely wild. Did you feel that that, that, that trip was uh, positive? Yeah, it was definitely positive. It was definitely positive. And I don't believe in any bad trips. I yeah. Think, you know, you're always going to learn something. You hear people know. always say, like, you know, you could have, like, uh, like my buddy uh, my buddy was like, I'll never eat mushrooms again. I had a terrible trip. He said he looked in the mirror. And That's a he, fucking mistake. He said he looked in the mirror and he saw spider webs just crawling all over uh, his face. Nice. And I and don't look in the mirror. I know. I don't it, look in the mirror. Well, it's like, I've definitely looked in there and seen it and it's like you see your eyes all fucked up and everything you done that you looked in the mirror yes I'm I'm too I don't want to look in the mirror the last trip I did I like slightly looked in the mirror and then I saw myself looking back at me with this fucking grin I was like nah I'm not looking at this shit yeah it's creepy the smile you get (laughs) it's it's definitely weird because you're like I can't believe I don't want to be smiling this big but it's like yeah yeah but but it's like you hear people that say like oh yeah you could have a bad trip but it's it's definitely the mindset and the you know intention the, it. It, well it, yeah it's the intention but it's also like your environment it's oh, the people too. you're yeah. with everything like that because if you're just like going to like a fucking crazy house party or something yeah, like that and you eat it it's like that ain't a welcoming environment yeah. to like because you got too much too many like factors that could Fuck you know shit up, bro. could change yeah, you have to have a very sure. contained environment <clears throat> yeah but, I like uh, sitting in the house. Um, you know, I'll go outside in nature. You know, I got a spot up in Mount Washington. Yeah. That uh, Grandview Park, like on a sunny day. That's a Someone just told spot. me about Grandview Park. Uh, I've never been there. Uh, man, it's so dope. It's so dope that no one goes there. I know. That's but what he said. When the people hear this now, they're probably going to be popping up there. I probably shouldn't have said that. Dude, a bunch of people have told me that. And <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, we've talked about it on here. He was, uh, he rides his bike up there all the time. Uh, He's like, dude, so there ain't no one there. No one there, though. You see the whole fucking city. And just, I'll be up there for hours during the summer, bro. Just That's dope. Chilling. Um, you know, go up there around 11, do what I do. Yeah. I'm there till like five, six, just fucking rolling in the grass. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Chilling. Enjoying music, life. You know what I mean? Um, just looking at the fucking sky, man. I was up there, the last time I was up there before like fall, man, I talked to the earth. That shit was crazy. Like the sky, like the clouds. Yeah. Like each element came alive and it's like, the, like it was like the earth was sitting there waiting for me yeah. to tap in with it. And it was like, yo, it was like, it was like really fucking wild. Um, That's interesting. It's cool, man. It's a special spot for me because um, I celebrated my mom's birthday up there. My kids and I, we went up there, let the balloons off because it's so high up yeah. in the sky. So, you know, I love to go up there and just like vibe out and chill. That's dope, dude. Yeah, yeah. That is dope. Now, uh, like, what are your goals you know, for the next, you know, people are always like, you know, what is your five years plan? Like, what do you, what, what would you like to accomplish in the next year? So in the next year, man, um, to be honest with you, I want to, uh, you know, continue being a yoga teacher, like build that up because I'm right now I'm ready to step into the spiritual side of John Quest. It was kind of like behind closed doors yeah. for a while. Like I might have dropped a little nugget here and there. Yeah. But I'm ready to step out Comfortable to and tell to people what I'm doing it. and showcase it and like start getting clients for Reiki and et cetera, et cetera. Now, for people that are listening, you just started teaching a yoga class. Yeah, yeah. I'm at Trap Yoga. Trap yep. Yoga. Trap Yoga. Shout out to the Trap. When is that? What is Trap Yoga? No, when is oh, it? Oh, when is it? Okay, so when is it? It's going to be um, Mondays from 8 to 9 p.m. Yeah. And then Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Where's this at? Um, so Trap Yoga is located on Penn Ave. It's right by the Target in East Liberty. Okay. Um, I can look up the address and do all that. But um, yeah, it's right in East Liberty. So Monday nights, though, starting like next week, it's going to yeah. be hip-hop nights. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to get more guys to come out. For sure. You know I mean? um, shout out to the ladies, too. But like, there needs to be more guys. It's like Ralph. We'll say, I mean, stepping into this field and like doing hundred percent is good for you. you right? Well, you the, you have to have a person. You got to have a person that is a uh, that is a right conduit to you bring know, you into that to stuff. bring people yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. like, and, and before when before I met Ralph, I mean, I've known him forever, but like before I found out that he was like getting into the yoga, it's like I would never do it. You know what I mean? Like yoga, <laughs> I felt the same way. I know it's thought of as being like such like a feminine thing, and it's I like know, it's bro. not for men and everything like that. But it's like 
you know, you start to hear like DDP yoga. I know. I just recently found that out bro, like a couple sick. weeks ago, bro. He he's changed deep people's into yoga. lives. I was like, whoa. Like boys man. that are about to like commit suicide yeah. just from like their body's not working well, changing their lives completely. Like Jake the Snake and shit. Bro, like wrestlers from back in the day, he's literally changing people's wrestling lives. Wrestling's my shit. I was into wrestling growing up. I was into wrestling a lot. You were into heavy? Yeah, yeah I was into wrestling heavy. That's up, sick. Bro. Yeah. That's sick. Like, right now, I don't watch it as much. I, I got my son into it. I stopped watching you know it mean? whenever there was people like Carlito Cool. That's the last yeah, yeah, person I remember. I remember. <laughs> Bite an apple and spit it at yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I grew up whenever it was like, you know, Stone Cold or The Rock. You know what's crazy? I Mankind. Got a wild story. You know Mark Henry? Yeah. He asked my mom out on a date. Mark Henry? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. That's sick. We were at uh, fucking Mellon Arena, and he was walking the crowds, and he stopped my mom and asked her for her phone number. And uh, That's dope. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't go out on a date because Mark Henry just went to, you know what I mean, hit it and quit it because <laughs> yeah, he's in sure. town. Like, for sure. <laughs> but she didn't go. Um, yeah, that's, that's a That's crazy, a good story, yeah, though. It's wild. It's fuck. sick because uh, I was living up, uh, before I moved here, I lived over towards uh, like Robinson area, mm. and that's where Kurt Angle frequents. Mm. Bro, I saw him too. Sick. Just being up in Market District. I'm just pull, pushing my buggy in Market District and fucking Kurt Angle turns and is going down the cereal aisle <laughs> and he's wearing his like flip flops and these short shorts with his fanny pack. And I'm like, did you take a picture of him? Fuck no. He looked so uninviting. So I saw that picture you took with him <laughs> at the airport. And he, he was looked so nice pissed. Then. No, he was so pissed that I bothered him because he was eating food. Uh, people, that's what, I, that's what I mean. You could tell that that dude always is getting yeah, bothered. I've heard that. Like, he does not like taking pictures at all. That looked like a good pick, though. He he had a smile going a little bit. So, like, you know, the backstory behind it is interesting, but it's like, you know, I, I knew that this dude wasn't going to have yeah, no, yeah, yeah. me taking pictures. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's interesting to, you know, it's it, like, it, it's, it's just interesting to, like, see, you know, the whole male dynamic of everything. You know what I mean? Like, it's such like a... You know, like I have do I have friends that are like, Yeah, I ain't doing no yoga. That shit's weak. It's for females, everything like that. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, bro, yeah. like I'm telling you, like, it'll change your life. For sure, bro. And uh I think there just needs to be more people that do it. And that's like what made me want to have Ralph on here mm -hmm. and talk about it because like, you know, I like to I like to use, you know, this platform to you know, kind of expose dope shit and nah, preach yeah, it to sure, the masses. For sure, for sure. And I feel that, you know, People like if people that I'm friends with hear me talk about it in a certain way, it might feel all right for them to want to try it and like kind of get into it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that people who listen to this, you know, might feel that same way because, you know, we talk about you being part of like this crazy popular hip hop duo. And it's like, you know, have that that chapter of your life and then being OK with like, you know, saying, you know, like, you know, I wasn't in a good place and like you know, wanting to have this, you know, this spiritual awakening and this health and wellness and this mental, you know, build up your mental fortitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's dope to me because it's like, I'm in this point in life where I want this and I like could see this and like, I want to share it with other people. And uh, it's, it, I mean, it's inspiring to see people like I appreciate you that, to bro. do that. Appreciate that. For um, sure. I, I I got the address pulled up now, so I'll do the proper shout Go out. Ahead. It's Trap Yoga Studios. Um, or we're located at 6101 Penn Avenue, uh, Suite 102. That's right by the Target in East Liberty. How people? Uh, can, how can people like get in there? So you can look up um, trapyogastudios.com. That's the website. And you can book a slot because we have to book in advance. You can't yeah. just walk up. Um, then you can also check uh, my Instagram, Quest the Yogi. That's my next little, that's my brand that I'm building on the the, the spiritual side. It's still John Quest, right? I kind of went through a couple brand name changes. I was like, look, I'm just going to be myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead Why of just not? trying to put some fucking proper name yeah, and yeah, like I'm just that. Quest the Yogi, you know? I think it's more appealing <laughs> whenever it's like someone that's like, I know that name. Like, yeah. That name's up in there. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, man, that's where that's where we're at, and um, I'll be doing Reiki sessions down there as well. So people that are interested in Reiki, getting a Reiki session, uh, they can come through there. It can also be done distancely, uh, just you know, not you can be at your home and I can be at the crib. I don't even know if that was a word I said, but distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I say some, some random up. shit on here. Um, yeah, distance yoga. So I mean, distance Reiki, um, but yoga can be done over Zoom too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, man, that's where that's what I'm doing. But as far as like the rest of the year, um, I got a musical coming. That's gonna be like the next big thing. That I'm a gonna musical? Be yeah, I'm doing a musical, bro. 
I um, love that. Yes, it's called Quest and the Girl with the Yellow Jacket. It's with my homegirl, Holly Hood. She's also another uh, Pittsburgh uh, rapper, MC. She calls herself the mother of Pittsburgh hip hop. <laughs> and uh, we're doing it at the New Hazlet Theater, actually. What Now, what is it going to be? So it's going to be a combination um, of both of our albums, My Hollywood Divorce, and then she also has an album called uh, Yellow Jacket. Yeah. The funny part about this, right? We were both working on music at the same time, and she was actually my uh, the friend that I was talking to about my spiritual awakening, because her real name is Amber. She's a witch. She, yeah. she was the only one that I could confide to about what the fuck I was going through, because she does this shit. And you know, she's older than me, and I was just like looking to her for fucking advice. Yeah. Um, but during that time, I'm like, yo, I'm working on an album. She's like, oh, me too. Like, what's yours about? She's like, oh, mine's is about being a side chick in a marriage. I'm like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Mine's is about a man going through a divorce and, you know, cheating. So works off <laughs> of each other. Yeah, so um, she put hers out. I put mine out. And this is completely random. Like, a month back to back. A month apart, I mean. And uh, there was a grant application opportunity that we applied for. Yeah. And we the idea was to combine both of our albums and tell one love story. So we got selected along with four other really uh yeah, musicals productions. That's dope. Um, so yeah, it's for the CSA uh twenty twenty one at the New Hazlet Theater and there's five different productions. They're all dope. Uh, if you go to the New Hazlet uh theater website, you can just Google it because I don't remember it right yeah. now. But you'll see us on the on the page and our show is going to, it was supposed to be January. Um, like next week actually, but it got moved to May 20th and the 21st mm. because of COVID. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're combining both of those. We're actually writing a script. We have a, uh, there's TJ Parker Young. He's our dramaturg. I didn't even know what a dramaturg was, bro. It's somebody that helps Turk? you. Is that what dramaturg. You said? Dramaturg. Dramaturg. Yeah. Wow. Um, this is someone that helps you write they're like a playwright. They help you write the script and stuff. In that like format, you know, the right format. Right, you communicate yeah. it to them and they tell you how to communicate it. Right, to the uh, theater. Yeah. Like we have a whole squad, bro. We got a scenic designer, lighting designer. That's crazy. Um, videographer. We got a carpenter to build the set. You ever do any shit like that in high school? Like nah, any bro, plays this, or anything? This is my first time, bro. That's one thing I've, I've talked about on here numerous times. It's one thing that I regret more than anything is never doing any sort of like, mm. you know, like being in any of the plays in high school and shit because like why not, right? I've never done that shit. I didn't. I never even thought I would be doing this right now, bro. It's just like so fucking random. That's the best though. <laughs> like it's cool because we're still. It's not just like rapping, you know. We're yeah. Like obviously we're going to perform select songs that we formatted it where, like on my album and hers, we're both telling stories, but we have the songs in a certain order so they both fit yeah. in certain parts. Flow together. And, um, we're writing a script out because we're doing. You know, we're talking shit. We have a couple actors as well. Somebody to play my wife. Amber's best friend, the therapist for the therapy song. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really fucking crazy. And the other dope part about it is that it's not going to be live. I think I would be super fucking nervous if this shit was live and I have to remember 60 minutes of fucking rapping and yeah. script. Um, so we're recording it as a short film. Yeah, I love that. going to be fucking That's dope. the right way to do it right. because, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you know, if that's why I don't do the podcast live yeah. because it's like, you know, there's more pressure. That's a that's a different right, factor. Right, right. It's too much pressure. If you if you don't have to worry about that in the back of your mind, you could get into the, you can get into it on post. Fix small things that you need to that 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 might not completely ruin Shit. that might not completely ruin uh, the the entire show. Right, but there's right, something right. small that you might need to change. Yeah, that's dope though. Yeah, it that's should be very cool, exciting. Man. Yeah, the tickets are free too. You just got to go to the, the website and order a ticket. I'll bro. definitely come and check um, that out for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be broadcasted online. Um, three, there's three shows between the two dates and, um, yeah, man, we're just going to be a Q and a afterwards, but it's really cool because it's a completely different audience yeah. than just the people at like the fucking bars that I would be rapping to. Yeah. Like, and we're bringing hip hop to the fucking theater. Yeah. I would and like we, to see that for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, it's going to be sick, man. Um, it's going to be real sick. You know, we have some really, really good ideas in the way we're putting this all together. Um, it's dope. But like I said, the rest of the shows are dope too, because the one of them, um, I think it's just like all dancing. Yeah. You know I mean, the other ones are like, uh, there's a one called singles. It's about five group, uh, five people in the group. They're like, they're single. Uh, it's like they're, the lens into their single life and how they all kind of intertwine together. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of different shit, man. It's, it's cool, man. Everybody has a dope show. So it I sounds suggest, exciting. Uh, to just go ahead and watch them all really, you know? 
All right. It's now, uh, maybe uh, before you get into that, hit me up and we'll try to maybe get you back in here because I feel like we can talk, you know, a bunch of. I shit. know. Yeah. <laughs> We're already about to be in two hours. Wow, for real? Yeah, That's for real. Crazy, That's bro. what I'm saying, dude. People don't yeah. understand it because it's like you can just go off. That's uh, wild, but uh, I want to start buttoning this up. So, the ending segment that I do with all the guests on the podcast yeah, is right, an right. ending segment called Desert Island Questions. Okay. Desert Island questions. This is my favorite part because like we learned about your life, Mm -hmm. learned about everything like that, deep shit. But it's like this is uh I feel like that this tells a lot about people. So Desert Island questions is whenever I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island to exhaust until expulsion. Okay. First category, three things to watch. You get to pick three movies. Mm. Watch over and over and over again. Go ahead. Ooh. I put you on the spot this last yeah, couple yeah, minutes. For sure, it's cool. All right, three movies. So, Last Dragon. Oh, it's a good one. Coming to America. It's a good one. What do you think about the second one coming out? You think that they're going to do it justice? Yeah, I think so. Because Eddie, so Eddie Murphy doesn't come out for bullshit. I, I think like, so too. Even at, uh, what was that movie that he did on Netflix? Was it Dolomite or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that was a good. movie. That was sick, actually. <laughs> People probably looked at that and they were like, "I don't know about this," but that was sick. Right. That's how I felt. But it was a good movie. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, uh, the last one, I might. Ooh, the last one. I'll just probably say The Matrix. I can always watch The Matrix. Mm, I just watched it recently, yeah. uh, probably six months ago. Mm. And uh, phew, the movie is just insane. Oh, it's fucking deep. You know what's crazy about The Matrix? What I just found out, right? Um, there is, you can look, I'll send you the link. But are you familiar with Clubhouse? The, yeah. Okay. So a couple of days ago, I was on Clubhouse, and there's a room about the original creator of The Matrix. It's not the brothers. Oh, really? I didn't notice. They actually stole- They're actually the sisters now. Oh, the sisters? Okay, the sisters. Yeah. yeah, right. The sisters, yeah. Um, they stole the script off of this black lady that wrote the Matrix in the book. Really? Yes. She actually wrote the original Matrix and the Terminator. It was a, a story put together, and they I'd, stole- I'd love to look into it and yeah, hear it. They stole her, her ideas from the book- and wrote out, they split it up, and then they wrote, you know, they put out Matrix 1, 2, 3. Yeah. This is all her. And she actually won a case against them, but Hollywood won't put it out yeah. because of the whole situation. She won like $3.2 billion, bro. That is sick. Yeah, I'll send you the information. I just found she did a whole talk about this shit for like six hours, bro. That is Crazy. sick. I had no idea about yeah, that. I didn't know until like I remember seeing ago. the Matrix back whenever I was like, I think it came out whenever I was like eight or nine, and like I remember seeing it in the movie theater, like midnight release, and just thinking like, this is so fucking sick. But it was all because of the action. But now I'm a little bit older and I watch it, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, yeah, it's God, it's a lot like, of messaging. Still holds up. Yeah. It definitely still holds yeah. up. I'm excited to see the next one come out. Yeah, I'm excited too. Even though they, you know, I mean, she said, "Look, I wrote it. I know they stole that shit." That's but, sick. You know I mean? That's sick that 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 that, uh, that that happened. I had no idea about yeah, that. I had no idea, bro. Okay, so that's good. So you picked, uh, you picked uh, coming to America. You picked the Matrix and Last Dragon. Last Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good. I like them. I like them. Okay, uh, so the second category is three things to read on a desert island. So you get to pick three books. Mm. All right. So the Alchemist. You ever read The Alchemist? No, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I would take that. Um, you read a lot? I do now. Yeah. Before, I really didn't. I was reading like technical books for work and shit. Yeah. But like now, I read a lot of spirituality books and like, you know I mean, health and stuff like that. I read a lot more now. I need to read more. Um, I just have to be interested in it though. Yeah, you exactly. Because I, mean? I could read something 50 times and if I'm not interested, I just read Gucci Mane's book. It was incredible. I didn't read that one yet. Bro, it was so sick. Uh, right. It really was crazy. Mm. I got to check that one out. Yeah, it was good. Um, so The Alchemist, The Power of Now, which is a, that's another uh, good book. Um, Eckhart Tolle, he wrote that book. Um, that's like a, it's a spiritual book. Like, you know, you're going through a spiritual awakening. It's about talking about uh, being in the present and not yeah. really worrying about the past. Or the future, yeah, just being the power of now, the present. You know what I mean, and just kind of living in that, because then you just let things flow. Yeah. Um, and then the third book, ooh, the third book, third book. <laughs> I feel like I would have to take the subtle art of not giving a fuck since I'm stuck on the island. I just can't give a fuck. I'm just. You know, I have right? that book. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> That's what I feel like I have to take. I'm someone who buys books 
and I'll just I'll go to Barnes and Noble, pop a quick check, and they'll just sit on my bookshelf. I do the same fucking thing. Bro. I, I got so many books I did not read. So I'll many go to Barnes and Noble. When we were moving Bye, in here, man. my wife was like, "You ain't never read a fucking book." She was like, "Get rid of some of these." <laughs> um, Something about it though. No. Yeah, I just, I figure, you know, I always think like if the world ends, I'm going to read a bunch of books, but mm-hmm. then here it was a pandemic and instead of reading a book, I was building puzzles. Nah, I, um, I definitely do the same shit, man. That's all right. do the same shit. That's all right. We're uh, inquisitive people. We'll get to it. Um, okay, so the third category, this is what I'm uh, most interested. Three CDs. <laughs> all right, look, can I look at my phone again? Yeah, go ahead. All right, because I got, I already know, three CDs. So I am going to go ahead and bring... I'll probably bring Nas Illmatic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also going to bring uh, Jimi Hendrix, Experience Hendrix. Amazing. And then I will probably bring. Uh, do, 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 do. I'll probably bring The Dark Side. Um, I think it's called. Yeah, it's called The Dark Side. Uh, I don't know if you heard of it before, but. It is the dark side, all that noise. So this is just like an instrumental mm. album, and it's something that I listen to on all my trips. Really? Yeah. So you're gonna have to send it to me after this for yeah, sure. I found this. I think they made it in like 1999. I have a lot of psychedelic rock music that I listen to faithfully every trip, and it's Jimi Hendrix. A lot of dark side, the dark side, uh, Quicksilver, Messenger. Yeah, this is shit from like the fucking 50s and 60s, but. This uh this one is just an instrumental album. Like from start to finish, it's a good ride. All Jimi Hendrix through. was sick. If you think about it, and uh, you know, I was reading a book about him and they were saying that he used to pour acid all over his gum, his chewing gum, and just go out there and just like slip into his zone. Mm-hmm. And uh it's wild to think about that. Yeah, I don't I don't do acid no more. I only did a few times. I don't do it anymore. Yeah, I mean I I'd, I'd eat a mushroom though. You yeah, know, it's from the that. earth. Yeah, you know what I mean? That. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's from the earth. Yeah. Yeah, I, said, the I don't want no shit. weird yeah, shit. I don't want no chemicals. Some weird people are uh, blotting shit on a paper. Uh, nah, no I'm more. good on it. No more. That was the only time that I, somebody that I felt like I had a quote unquote bad trip. And yeah. After that, I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm yeah. not doing this shit. Dirty. Anymore. Yeah, it, it was not cool, bro. All right. So uh, the second to last category or second to last thing I asked is. Uh, uh man, it's been like a month and a half, I, and I don't even remember all this shit. What's that? Uh, the second to last thing I ask is the death row meal. So death what row meal, uh, you ever read them articles of people about to be put to death? They give them anything that they want to eat. eat? Oh, okay, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you eat? You can pick whatever you want, however you much you want from wherever. Um, I probably I probably have to go ahead and say a steak. Steak? That's probably the most yeah, common yeah. answer. Steak, baked like potato, steak. and shit. Yeah, yeah. I think they like a steak, baked potato, like some vegetables. Really good steak. If this is my last meal, you know, I'm mean, probably get this. And I've been trying to wean off of meat. Yeah. As much about I've been still, getting like, weird about it. Snake steak is really uh, that's a, that's a, it's pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. Um, second to last question is, uh, so I'm sponsored by Turner's Tea. I do a segment. I did I did something called the Turner's Crate where mm-hmm. uh, I would have people pick a question that was submitted from the previous guests. But uh, because, you know, we're in COVID and shit like that, I just don't even want to deal with the crate. I've been asking everyone a very, very revealing question. So if you could walk into a gas station and you only get to pick one mm-hmm. snack, on a on a road trip, what would it be? Oh, that's easy, bro. That's gonna be peach rings. Ah, uh, that's my shit. Peach rings and <laughs> yeah, Turner's tea. It's gonna be peach rings. Oh bro. my god, peach rings are so good. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, forever. Two for the two for a dollar yeah, joints. Yeah, I remember yeah. sometimes them back in the day. fucking stale though. So you gotta get the brand name instead of just a little cheap joints. Yeah, you gotta give them yeah. a little feel. It's almost like trying yeah, to grape yeah. in a grocery sometimes they're store. Like fucking stuck to each other. <laughs> but peach rings is definitely something that I'm. Definitely. If I got to get one thing, it's going to be peach rings. Yeah, peach rings. <laughs> I mean, that's probably my favorite candy. Um, all right. So the uh, last question that I ask everyone is if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Ooh, shit. That's now, a fucking Now, I know that bro. you said your mother passed away. Usually people pick a loved one that's very close to them, and that's fine. You could pick a loved one, but I want to know someone that you don't have ties to, really. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. Because I feel like it's assumed. Like you would want to, I would want to speak to my grandfather. Like, right, right, you know what I mean. Right, right now, right now. Ooh, to be honest, if I could pick somebody like right now, I'd be like yo, come through. 
Let's have a conversation. Like this conversation right here. Yeah, this yeah. is the environment that I'm talking about. If you could talk to anyone. I'm probably going to say Donald Trump. Hey, a lot of people have said him. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, I would say Donald Trump. And the reason why I'm picking Donald Trump, so I just want to get inside his head yeah. and see like, yo, like what the fuck were you thinking? Or like just his thought process. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Behind a lot of the shit that has happened. Um, and then I'm also going to ask him like, yo, What's up with the aliens? Like, I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they're there. Did you see that they just released like 2,400 pages of documents from uh, Area 51? Just recently? Just like, uh, I think this week. Like, Okay, because he, he was putting the pressure on them because they had to release something in like 120 days. About yeah, they, they literally they just up. released it like uh, thousands of pages. So uh, I'm trying to get deep into that. So um, I know we're wrapping up, but I definitely had several encounters with aliens <laughs> yes sir i ain't scared to talk about it <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean. I i saw you know i'm i'm someone who uh i don't have any reason to lie about it you right. know what i mean and uh i i never seen anything that i could not explain as far as like ghosts or anything like that me and my wife went down to Monsville prison i seen a ghost with my two eyes I, that. I always wanted to go down there bro it was uh it was wild because you know I think like, you know, I would be terrified and everything like that, but it was just, I was more curious. Mm. It's like, I saw this ghost walk across and then we walked into the room that that person that I saw walk across, yeah. no one there. No one there. And it's like, I, I still can't explain it. Uh, as far as aliens, hundred percent, I believe in aliens. Uh, whenever I was probably like 14, my cousins live up by seven Springs, mm. 60 acre farm, you know, that's where they like to be. We couldn't there. drive or nothing. So like we would always just be out in the driveway shooting hockey, skateboarding, whatever. And, uh, out in the distance, I saw a blinking red light and you think it's like a cell tower or some shit like that. And it, you know, it was something that, you know, we never, we never like, we never like saw or anything like that. And then I ask him and I go, what's that light over there? And he's like, I don't know. I never seen that. So like, we're, we're out there for like a half hour, just looking at it. And, um, I, you know, they had a telescope. So he went in and I was like, go get your telescope. So I swear to, I swear to God on everything. As soon as we put that telescope down and I started moving it over to that light, I swear to God, shot up right in the air yeah, and, uh, disappeared. Still can't explain yeah. it. I got no reason to lie about right, it. I believe you, bro. You've I been seeing you. some aliens. I definitely, um, there was two times when I lived in like the Penn Hills area yeah. that, you know, uh, a UFO had a slight encounter with that. I was with my friend Ron and we were driving from like Penn Hills. We were driving from Plum into Penn Hills, but like the back roads. Yeah. And I was in my mom's Jeep and it was like fucking storming, raining really fucking hard. And the rain just stopped. Bro, but we could see it. We could see the rain like ten feet in front, in front of, of us. Yeah, but it stopped hitting the fucking jeep. And we look up as we're driving. There's these fucking. There's like like six or like eight little lights just over in like the circular motion. And we're driving like, yo, what the fuck is that? And again, there's no other cars around. We're like in the woods, the back roads. Yeah. Right? So it's like that for like thirty. 45 seconds and then it takes off and the rain just hits us again and we weren't under no bridge or anything when that shit just went off and then we kind of seen it as we're driving it kind of like follow us a little bit and then it just zipped off uh, and there's another time too but even like even on the shrooms like you know you're going to definitely encounter different entities For and sure. things like that but um, so yeah that was definitely um, two times where I was like yo phew, this is crazy but you know just experimenting with other things stuff likes to pop up I'm very open to a lot of stuff. Like, even today. Open-minded. Even just, like, open spiritually. Like, my light. Yeah. Bright, my sh it shines so bright. Because um, I'm a healer, naturally. And the shit just, like, they like that. You know, the light. And um, <laughs> just today, man, I was at work. Like, I'm working from home. My fucking lights are, like, flickering like crazy. So I already know something is here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I get in my meditative state. I'm like, yo, who is this? And I saw a man, but he wouldn't show his face or give me his name. But I knew that he wasn't here for a good reason. He was just like a mischievous, you know, uh, fuck, I'm fucking up words again. You know what I mean? Demonic, um, whatever? Yeah. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say demonic, right? I'm not going to say demonic because like it's different levels to it, but he was just a lost spirit, yeah. like a dark energy. And he was just trying to, 
feed off of my my light. Ah, so I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? They're attracted to your light. Yeah. And I'm working. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I got to send you along your way. So, you know, what I did, I go to my altar, get into my meditative state, call into my gods, and had to cross them over into the light and get them out of, you know, being stuck from here. Mm. But like, it was like crazy as fuck because I was sitting there working. And uh, Is this shit scare you ever? It did the first time. Yeah. It did the first time. But that's the thing. They feed off of fear. Yeah. And we're much more powerful than them. The fear is what they feed off of. Mm. Um, and that grows once they get a taste of it. Right. Yeah. They're just they're going to fucking play off of it. Because yeah. I do have a scary story where I was like fucking terrified. Yeah. Some shit happened. Um, it's like the poltergeist, actually. Uh, like the shit came out the TV, you, bro. This happened to you? Yeah, bro. How, how old were you? This was like two years ago. No, this was, uh, was this, 2021? This was 2019. What what happened? You can't just be like, yo, I got a, <laughs> I got a story about a polder guy, so you can't just peace right, out on so, that. So, um, again, like I said, um, I was very, very open to a lot of spirits were just like attracted to my light because that happens when you become a Reiki practitioner. Yeah. They're opened up to the spirit world. So um, there was this little girl that was in my apartment building. She was a, a, a spirit. And... I didn't know it was a little girl at first, but like one night, I was just trying to chill in there, and I just heard like fucking footsteps, like, you know what I mean? In the middle of the night. Out. <laughs> in the middle of the night. And I'll then, move my house out. Yeah, so my kids, like the next day, they're like, Daddy, somebody called our name. This little girl called our name, and it's just us chilling there. So I went to my teacher. I'm like, yo, I think I have something in my house because he deals with this stuff all the time. He's yeah. a shaman. Yeah. And uh, he's like, all right, well, you might want to make contact with her, see what she wants. She might need your help or, you know, she might not want anything. So that's what I did. I made contact. This is new to me. I'm just kind of excited to make contact with her, end up finding her name. She died. Her name was Sarah. Uh, she was like five years old, bro. And she died in a car accident mm. in like 1968 or so. And I got all this information from her because I was talking to her. And she wanted help to be crossed over into heaven because mm-hmm. she's been stuck here. So when you yeah. die, you, you only have like a few seconds to cross over. And sometimes you get stuck. Yeah. She was stuck and she wanted help because she noticed my light. So I ended up just Googling some shit and teaching myself how to cross over the spirit. <laughs> and the shit worked. Um, <laughs> that is ridiculous. Yeah, it's fucking wild. So it worked, right? And I got confirmation that it worked because my mom popped up the next day. Like, hey, the little girl that you helped out, you did a good job. She's up here in heaven. And my spirit God also said the same thing. This was the first time I got introduced to my spirit God. My spirit God was working with my mom. She give me chills. <laughs> and um, my mom was like, so now that you did that, right, your light is shining much brighter and you passed the test. But you need to be careful because there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to pop up and you can't trust anything. Yeah, try to deter you. Right. So the next day, bro, it's like three o'clock in the morning during the witching hour. I'm sleeping on my couch with my my dog. Yeah. And I had the TV on. It was a black black and white movie, but the audio was down fucking low. So I woke up. Something just woke me up. And again, the audio was down to like level eight. You could barely hear. Yeah. And this guy on the TV screen, he had a tux on, fucking mustache with like a cigar and the audio just turned all the way up and this little girl's voice came out of the TV. It was like, hey, I hope we can still be friends. And it went back to like just being muted. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? My dog is looking at me and I just knew that is wild. like this is not her. And then I could just feel her poking at me. And I'm sitting there thinking like, yo, if I cross this little girl over into heaven, why the fuck is she back down here? Might be a bad person. You know I mean? Yeah. And um, it ended up being some bad shit yeah. because I made contact with it. And by doing that, I invited it into my home. And now this thing was in my crib for like three days fucking with me and my kids. And um, again, I just had to go through boot camp and figure out how to get rid of this shit. And that's when I got over my fear because I was terrified at I first. Bet. But I just was not going to allow anything to fuck with my kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do yeah. they have any sort of like traits that you that you would think that like they could see things or tell? Yeah, my, my son, um, 
Julian, he he has some gifts. Yeah. yeah, I really don't tell everybody that, but I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, um, but he definitely has some gifts. And what I found out is that we have a spiritual cord connected to each other. So as I'm advancing, he was also advancing because he was also seeing my mom, and he's clairvoyant. He could just look around and see shit walking around, but there was a lot of shit yeah. that wasn't from you know our ancestors that was trying to contact him. Because we were connected. Yeah. And they would like say shit to him, like, oh, your dad can't protect you. Uh, la. And that was like another crazy time for us because, you know, as a father, you're hearing your 10 year old, 11 year old son telling yeah. you that he's seeing fucking demonic looking things walking around. Yeah. And he knew what I was doing as far as Reiki and stuff like that. Um, so I had to learn how to shut all that shit down on him. Like, turn his chakras. I had to block all that. I had to shut all that shit down. Yeah. Shut all his gifts down. And, uh, because he's too young. Like, yeah. some kids will go through that for their entire lives and, like, see that stuff. Yeah. But it was, it was so traumatic to him and to me. So, I ended up learning how to shut all that down. And, you know, things have been cool ever since. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's, go- it's going to pop up again when he gets older. Um, it's going to pop back up. He's more ready. Yeah, it's going to pop back up. He's just like me. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, he has gifts, you know? He has gifts. And just from like the synchronicities that I've encountered in my life, meeting different psychics and stuff that they've been telling me about my life and then the ones that I was talking to about how can I help him, they're like, yo, he's super, super powerful. Like you can either train him how to use his gifts or shut him down. And the best decision for us was to shut that shit down because I was also still learning. Yeah, you're not like going through my shit. You're not like a veteran to, yeah, to like, be able to <laughs> to deal with that battle nah, that would happen. Yeah, so um, it was the best thing. And he, and he was seeing my mom all the time, bro, like all the fucking time. And she was giving him messages and he would tell me and just like, it was crazy. Was That's really wild, bro. Yeah, it was wild. I appreciate you like opening up to me and like, you know, like I said, we ain't never met each other. Yeah, you know, like sure, I appreciate you opening up to me and like talking to me about all this. And, uh, you know, I think it's, cr- I think it's crazy. Like not crazy. I think I, that's a bad name. No, that's cool, it's a bro. bad word. It it's has wild, a bad bro. connotation, but you know, it is, it's wild. It's, it's very, wild very shit. interesting though. Yeah, it's wild shit, um, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. Oh, I would love to come back. You know, man. I feel like we could uh, keep go talking off. for hours. Like. Two hours, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, man. But uh, all right, take a second. Tell everyone where they could follow you. Tell everyone where they could get to your yoga classes where, 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 and where. all that. All right, cool. So um, appreciate everyone listening. Uh, so if you want to reach me, you can go to my website, actually. It's www.whoisquest.com. Dot com. That's Q-U-E-S-T, just who is, just like those two words so all put together, whoisquest.com. And that'll take you to my music, all the stuff, like my upcoming projects that I'm doing. And uh, there's soon going to be a, a yoga website, but I'm not done with it yet. Yeah. Uh, but whoisquest.com. And then, you know, I'm on Instagram, johnquest412. But I also have Quest the Yogi. That's my other uh, Instagram account where I'm going to be posting a lot of my uh, my spiritual stuff. Uh, you know, yoga classes on both accounts. And then yoga is at Trap Yoga Studios, which is Mondays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and then Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And Mondays, I, won't, I don't think it might not, it might not be every Monday, but there's going to be hip hop nights on Monday. It just really all depends on the mood and who's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I definitely believe like you can do yoga. That's why they call it trap yoga because they do yoga to trap music. Um, so, you know, I love trap music, but I like hip hop. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to be doing yoga to Griselda Records and Benny the Butcher. <laughs> that's how I do it in the gym. I'm listening yeah. to them doing yoga. Like <laughs> you can't you can't beat it. I love it. Go, boop, 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 boom, <laughs> as we go into the our chair pose. Distinguished and, gentleman. So. <laughs> um Hey, I appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm excited. This was to, a blessing, man. I'm excited to see where you go with this. Like, it's motivating for me to uh, hear about your journey. It's just motivating to know that you know there's opportunity to, you know, change the course of your life and and kind of get to where you want to be. With yeah, it. yeah, I appreciate it, bro. I really enjoyed this, man. I've been looking forward to coming here for a uh, long time, man. You know, I enjoyed your work. 
you know um i appreciate yeah, that it's been dope man i'm Thank trying you. uh everyone else that's listening appreciate it as usual we got some candles coming out they're fire they smell crazy uh Still smell fire those are my candles i just got going oh for real yeah oh those are yours yeah i'm about oh, to be wait, selling wait, wait, them those are, know, that's cool those are them testers you see candles i can get some for some candle magic you already know we'll be getting <laughs> it in there. Uh, everyone else that's listening though please if you have not yet rate review and subscribe to the podcast biggest thing you could do we're not video getting worked into here the studio is about to be done this is the first interview in the studio i'm excited about it but uh thanks for listening call you right back peace